It's a seat belt. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I've got this new car, <laughs> as you know, and, uh, uh, Lisa's you weren't here yesterday, Artie. You missed the fireworks. Oh, I missed, I, you know what? I, I missed the whole show. I was sleeping, but, uh, did you hear anything? I heard it was, <laughs> I heard it was very interesting. We had a relationship expert. The Croce guy, yeah. 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 I'm upset I missed that. He came in and tried to straighten out things between me and Ronnie. Ah! And he was confounded. Oh, I didn't know we did you and Ronnie. Yeah, he was confounded. He just didn't know what to do. Oh, with me. There's no arguing with Ronnie. Ronnie, how would you feel if he told you right now the truth? Listen, he can tell me whatever he wants to tell me. It's fine. But it, it's not like you can just throw something away like that. It's not an old shirt that you throw out the window. It's something that costs a lot of money, and you can't just take it and throw it away and build something overnight to replace it. See, he wants uh, me to like it. No, I don't he want... He wants me... That's let, not let, true. Can I be this honest? That's not true. Please. He wants me to, like, fix it, like, change the seats and stuff and see if we can fix it. I think that's throwing more money into the situation. Howard, what do you want to do? I want to get rid of it and get a regular, normal limousine. Ronnie, can you do that? No. Why not? Because it's, it's a whole hassle. Can you I mean, look into it? Ronnie, you're going to tell me you can't evaluate a I can, I can. limousine? Listen, listen. Let me explain my situation first, please. Hey, before you start taking me apart. <laughs> hey, listen, I make no judgments. All right. I'm only here to help. Well, I don't know. Everybody wrote me emails and stuff and said, like, the guy's got a serious problem. Like, oh. he just doesn't hear. On the bulletin board, they were like, oh, Ronnie's a retard. <laughs> you know, everybody was trying to say, you know, what doesn't he get about he doesn't like the car? But David Spade... Uh, wrote and sent me, not sent me, but left me the funniest voicemail ever. <laughs> and I, I'm going to play it for you today. i got to get down to Scott's studio. And... You should put out an album of Spade's voicemails. They're great. They're, they are great. Hello. Hello. It was funny because they even set it up as a poll. Is Ronnie retarded? On the board. Or when did Ronnie get retarded? Yeah, how retarded is he? <clears throat> so, um, I don't, I, I've been telling Ronnie since the beginning, I like to wear a seatbelt in a car and I keep saying the seat I, I keep telling everyone the seat belts you can't they don't work uh, you can't pull them out you can't pull them out this is the run I got in this morning I thought for sure they're going to be fixed I said when are they going to be fixed and he says he's like he's not answering me like like, like, like grunting uh, what do you want me to do I don't know I go well where is the guy who built the limousine in Brooklyn and then he wouldn't answer. I go, hello, hello. <laughs> you know, I'm like, like, are you talking to me? Or like, like, like what is it? I got to know the answer. I don't, you know. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, like that Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I go, what am I, what am I trapped in with this guy? <laughs> I got, I mean, I got a nightmare on my head. nightmare continues. I go, do you want me to say on the air, can someone come down and release the seatbelt so they work? You just, you can't pull them out. Yeah, they almost look like they're just there for show. So then he doesn't say anything. I go, Ron. Do you want me to say on the air that that somebody go, well, we're gonna get it fixed on Friday, 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 Friday. So I go, you're gonna get it fixed on Friday. Why don't why don't you get it fixed today? Like during the show. Drive the car over to Brooklyn and get it fixed. Are we only were always on Friday? I don't know. I don't know why. I don't understand. This, is, I, I, this has been going on since and, last Friday. I mean, you know, never mind. I'm not even getting. No, get into it. <laughs> I, well, there's plenty of times during the day. Yeah, I don't know. I'm on his schedule. <laughs> so I, I said, "Do you want me to get on the air and ask if any who's going to come down and fix the food bowl? Who's going to come down?" I go, "Well, I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody, who, a mechanic, or somebody who works on there cars. There must be at least one can-do guy." Yeah. In New York. Maybe there's a car dealer here in New York who knows how to release a seatbelt. I get a little motivated. They might want to come down. We'll give him a couple of bucks. Yeah. And then, Somebody who maybe cares about making you happy? Yeah, I, I go, I want a seatbelt. <laughs> what if this car stops short? I'm beheaded. Obviously, Ronnie doesn't care <laughs> my, about your being happy. My head is up in the ceiling. Well, yeah, you're going to be just uh, have a compression fracture. Yeah. You're <laughs> I got no, I said, I got to have a seatbelt. <laughs> How do you release the seatbelt? Every morning I get in and I tug at it and it doesn't work. Well, how do you put in a seatbelt that doesn't work? I don't know. I mean, but why do somebody, I have to wait? But wouldn't somebody test that when they're putting together a car? You would think. All right, seatbelts, check. Well, on the weekend I said to 
Ronnie's other drivers, I said, could you please tell Ronnie the seatbelt doesn't work? But, you know, meaning, I, I, get it done. I'm not the guy who gives the orders, but, but I'm like, well, wouldn't she just go over and get it fixed? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just getting more and more uncomfortable. I know. And, and yesterday didn't help. No. We tried to have a relationship expert in here to calm everything down. It got worse. Well, Ronnie and I had a discussion after the show. Oh, and, did uh, Yeah, we did. And I, and I said, look, he goes, well, he says to me, what do you want me to do? I, I don't know what to do. So I said, look, here's what I want you to do. He goes, don't you want to take a chance to see if the guy can fix this one? I said, well, I don't want you to put more money into this car if we're going to get a different one. He goes, well, the guy, the guy will do it. He'll, he'll just do it. He'll, he'll fix it for free. I said, okay, great. I said, okay, then let him do it. Let's see how it comes out. But I don't want to do it if you just want another car. So I said, well, you just said he'll do it anyway, so let's see how it comes out, and then we'll make a decision. But you still have the, the, the <laughs> big car. Ah, uh, that's all right. I, I mean, <laughs> maybe, get I could, used maybe to I'll, get, I'll live with it. It's not so horrible. <laughs> and you'll do, deal with the climbing in and climbing out? No, well, they're saying they can fix that. Oh, really? Yeah. What are they going to do? Have, like, one of those fold-down staircases? Yeah, that's what they're going to have. Really? So you'll like deal, on a bus. You'll deal with having the big car, then? Yeah. Well, that's a good compromise. Well, I don't even know. I don't even know that I want to do that. I mean, the, he said the guy would fix it, and then if I didn't like it, then we could sell it. Right. Oh. And but then he said, but I don't want to go through that if you just want another car. I go, well, how do I know if I want another car if he's going to fix it? Because it doesn't seem like an easy fix. I bet that's a lot. That's more what I money. said. So don't do it. Let's just get another car. And Again, then you... yeah, you're going to have the folding stairs inside the car. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I said, I said, Ron, I don't know how it's going to look or how it's going to be. I said, so don't go through all this thinking that it'll be okay. But if you want to go through all this, fine. And I, I, I mean, the whole thing is... Maybe they'll put one of those inflatable chutes and you could just slide out every time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm just... So I don't know what to do about the seatbelt thing. Is there anyone calling in that can fix the seatbelt? No, not yet. That's good. Please, if anyone knows how to, could you just come over? and It's got to be released. I guess I don't know how to explain it. I'm not a car guy, but the seatbelt is like attached and you can't pull it out the harness right but i don't know how you would i don't know whether that's a technical problem or a malfunction i don't know i'm trying to ask ronnie but he's not he's just giving me grunting answers I see. you don't help me with it watching you climb into that car you say one of the funniest things i've ever seen i just started laughing <laughs> i know it, it really is like if you're climbing on a rock in the park or something oh, yeah. and your next footing's just a little too high right. from where it should yeah. be you gotta like push yourself up and get your knee into the floor of the car you know what i'm thinking of getting a ballet yeah, you know for mountain climbing oh yeah there you go and you, you get tie a rope around your just pull yourself in. it's like a six-step process to get you need a sherpa yeah jason pushes me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what? Ronnie should just get down on his on all fours and let you climb on his back to get in. Yep. I mean, I know it's my fault because I didn't go look at the car ahead of time, but. Is it my fault that I need a Sherpa to push me into the car? Like you climbed into the seat? I just assumed I'd be able to get it. You need an Indian guy. Right, take it I don't even know why I'm, with you. I don't even know why I'm assuming all the responsibility here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like... <laughs> this whole situation is just classic. It's Stay just in radio man. contact, Howard. Howard's getting into the car. We don't want to lose him. Well, Ronnie says he can get into it just fine. And I'm like, well, let me see you do it. I haven't seen him do it. Right. You know? Because I'm telling you, it's you immediately have to check yourself when you look at how high that step is. Yeah. Well, a lot of limos, you have to do what I call like the limo roll, you know, where you get in, you go over once. But with this, you got to do that like four times. You got to hop and roll. Yeah, you got to continue. <laughs> I get an instruction manual when I, when, I, when I go in. But really, all I want is a seatbelt that works. So. And then getting out, once again, that's no easier. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> that's a whole other process. I have to sit on the floor to get out. Right. Which so is embarrassing. Off the car. <laughs> My pants all roll up. You're like a four year old. <laughs> Ronnie, can you come in and describe what's wrong with the seatbelt so I can get someone to fix it? Well, I mean, what is the big deal? Let's get it fixed. There are a few kinks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chris, you're, Chris, you're on the air. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, I have my senior prom coming up. 
In about two weeks, wonder if I could break your limo. <laughs> <laughs> See, you might make money out of this. Now, can it hold 32 people comfortably? Oh, easily. Easily. Well, that would really work out well. And I am half Puerto Rican. Is that going to be a problem? No, I think that uh, <laughs> that might be It'll great. It'll do you perfectly. Half of you will like it. <laughs> Outstanding. I'll, uh, I'll get the details. Thank you. Thanks. But seriously, I want to get the seatbelt fixed. He's not coming in. I don't oh, no. think he's talking about right. that anymore. You can't describe the problem. I wish I could so I could get a, a guy over here. Yeah, somebody who would, you know, get it and know what, they'd, what to do. Hey, Eric, you're on the air. What's up, Howard? Hey, man. Um, my friend could probably fix that for you. I'm in Rockland County. That's the only problem. Can, you, can Ronnie drive it to Rockland County? I was hoping someone in Manhattan could do it because he can't get evidently, it to Brooklyn. evidently he can't get it to Brooklyn. <laughs> What's the matter with it? I don't know. Like it locks into place, baby. It's when he hits the brakes. No, it's locked into place like you can't. He get can it. never pull it out. You can't pull it out. So how do you get out of the car? No, 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 no. It, you can't even use it. It's 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 oh, I, it's you flat can't pull it down. You can't pull it down. Well usually when that happens it's because like the, the driver's either hitting the brakes or turning the wheel or something. No, no, no. This even is, in the car. Even if the car's turned off the door. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You got a lemon. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> no, we didn't. The car's <laughs> wide. It's just too a... big to be a lemon. <laughs> too big to be no. a lemon. To cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Honeydew. Watermelon. All right, thanks, Eric. All right, thank you. All right. No, I guess Ronnie won't tell me how to how to describe what's wrong with it. No, he's never discussed it with the kid. Yeah, he must be pissed. He's all upset. He's devastated. Yes, so. Yes, so. Hey, come on. We're looking all over for Ronnie. We can't find him. Really? Yeah. I think he could be stuck in the back seat. <laughs> no, he went down to jump off the car and commit suicide. <laughs> What's up? This show's getting weird. Every What's the matter? Uh, Ronnie didn't say anything to you about not being here today, did he? No, he's here. So he just drove in. I guess that's a new move now. He, he just handed me something. Somebody dropped something off me, and he, as he's walking by, he goes, tell him uh, I, I, I'm not going to be here anymore. I got I to gotta go. I go, where are you going? He goes, I got some stuff to do. What? He just laughed. Oh, he's being a baby. Uh, you know, the other day he was just crowing how he doesn't run out. Now I guess he does. <laughs> what is his problem? <laughs> Get him on the phone. Let's find out what he's doing. He's for 9 11. But go catch him. What is he doing? He's being cool. He's being cool. He can only embarrass him. I have never seen a guy this sensitive about a car. You'd think the car was his dog. He probably took it to get the seatbelt fixed. But wouldn't he say that? I don't know what he's doing. He's carrying on like a chick. Come back. Come back. Give me the wave. Oh, come on, bro. All right, all right. No camera, no camera. No camera. No camera. No camera. Come on. Come on. He wants to talk to you. Being a girl. 
Because he's usually, he's usually up for this stuff. I mean, because he's saying he's getting somebody else to drive in here to drive you the rest of the day because he can't even see you anymore. <laughs> I want to change his name to Scores Girl 923. <laughs> he can't look at you. <laughs> That's girly. I know. This is all very That feminine. guys don't do that. No. Tell me I didn't go back and tell him to get in here right guys now. Guys can fight it out. No, guys. They'll smile at each tell other. Tell him to get in here right now. Guys do this, but there's a name for them. Gay guys. The gay guys don't talk to each other. I understand that. You're a man. You come <laughs> in. <laughs> Ronnie, you're being a girly man. He's an awfully hairy girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like him. <laughs> we'll just wait. This is awkward. This is awkward. Oh, I can't wait to see him come in. <laughs> no, I mean, this is awkward. Come on, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Don't pick the camera on me, I just stop throwing it against the wall. I actually shut it off. You know? Honey, what am I shooting? Yeah, that's the big deal. Yeah, you gotta stand inside the fucking door like a moron, like a little fucking baby when I ask you not to? Huh? Fag. Right, here it comes Ronnie. Come on, you're being a girl. What are you doing? You're being a girl. I don't want to get no Even David Spade. Get in here. You're going to be ridiculed, Ronnie. 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 Get up here. You're being a girl. You're being a girl. Because you're tormenting me with this car now, all right? I just want you're the seatbelt. You're tormenting me. I just want the seatbelt. You're thing. nuts. You're driving me nuts. So just so you're happy now, all right? I'm going to get the car fixed. Have a good show. I'll see you later. Hey, come back here or you're being a girl. You're being a girl. Everyone, even everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, you're gonna have to get an address. Everyone's saying, I'm not allowed to say anything about this car. I don't understand no, it. No, because you're tormenting But him. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I want a seatbelt. I've got a huge day today. I'm driving around in this thing. I said, I need a seatbelt. And I've said it for five days. Would you stop tormenting him? I, I don't know why that's tormenting. <laughs> I don't understand. What is the problem? Why is that such an, you know, it's like an unreasonable request to ask for a seatbelt? Oh, he's too funny. I think the situation's just so sensitive now. It's, it's nothing sensitive. It's ridiculous. It's, ridiculous. it's, ridiculous. it's, ridiculous. it's a car. If you just say the word dumb, if you say the word car, this is dumb. dumb. This is silly. I don't care anymore. Tell him to do what he wants. All right. But we'll move on. <laughs> skirt today so she can climb into Ronnie's car. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah, in the email and everywhere I go, people tell me the best thing about the show now is hearing argu arguments with Ronnie. Arguments with Ronnie. It's Ronnie. become a soap opera. People ask me every day, how is Ronnie? I mean, where is the debate now? Is Ronnie going to get a new car? What's going on? Ronnie's going to get a new car. I, I mean, I haven't told him yet, but he's going to get a new car. I'm just saying that's the level of interest there, right there with the story. <laughs> Anyway, my point is, you're gonna, you wore a skirt at uh, my request because um, you're gonna try and climb into the car without, A, ripping your skirt or showing your panties. Right. Uh, well, <clears throat> there you go. I yeah. don't know how I'm gonna do that. <laughs> is it a short skirt? It's pretty short. I mean, especially when you sit down. It's one of those things. Let me see. Let's check this out. It's one of those things that ride up when you sit down. Ah, but I cheat. Yeah, no, that'll do it. It has a zipper. Now I can understand if I need to stretch. That'll do it. Very good. That skirt will work. That's a nice outfit there. Good for you, Rob. That'll work. Okay. You see, but what you just said before should have been the attitude the, all along. Uh, he's getting a new car. Right. He doesn't know it yet, but he's getting a new car. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people know that, and, and the only one who doesn't seems to be Ron. Or, uh, Chauncey, you're on the air. Howard, how's it going? I hate to stir trouble up again. It's like shaking, you know, hornet's nest. But I think Ronnie has to pass Beetlejuice as the, as the show's best whack packer. <laughs> and, and his recent behavior it inspired me to do a new top ten list. I don't know if you saw it. I didn't see it. It's, it's pretty good. But I'm, I'm afraid to even tell you about it because it's going to make Ronnie crazy. Well, what is it? Let me hear it. If you want to read it or not, hang up. Okay, you ready? Yeah. First one. 
Ronnie can't work with others. He has no communication skills and gets easily frustrated when trying to express his thoughts. That's true. Number two, Ronnie is spoiled. Even in the real world, an employee listens to his employer and gets the job done. If an employee is in the, in the outside world, spoke to a boss the way Ronnie speaks to Howard, they would be unemployed immediately. You agree? Mm, yeah, yeah. Where, where are we going with this? Okay, all right. All right, let me, one more. Or but this more. is reasons Thanks. why Ronnie's the best whackpacker. Oh, I see. Ronnie isn't grateful. Judging by past security lapses, Ronnie is not qualified slash trained security official. However, Howard has given Ronnie a gratuitous title to earn a few extra bucks. Yet Ronnie seems to spit in Howard's face almost daily. All right. Ronnie evidently upset by your list. Go ahead, Ronnie. Go number four. I was, two girls want to take their tops off. I'm sorry. What was this? What's that? What'd you say? I said I was busy outside with two girls who want to take their tops off here. No, I he's... He, I didn't get a list. Yeah, he's calling in with a list. Of what? Reasons why you're the best whack packer. Whack packer? Yeah. Why, why am I a whack packer? Want me to read a couple more? I read them to Ronnie. Why'd you start from the beginning? Yeah. Ronnie, just listen. Ronnie, listen. Friggin Ronnie idiot. is the user. Many of yeah, I'm a user. user. Oh, my Can God. I, may I finish? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Ronnie yeah. is the user. Many of Howard's staffers are often freebies because of the show. However, Ronnie has abused that book by taking advantage of Lonnie Hanover's love of the Howard Stern show. A free drink on a house on occasion is one thing, but drinking a well dry is another. Well written. What do, you, what do you think of that, Ron? <laughs> I don't think any of it, because if they didn't want me there, they would tell me not to come. Five, five is one of my favorites, number five. I became friends with a lot of people there. I mean, Chauncey doesn't know about that because he doesn't have any friends. Number five. Ronnie he's banned from people. scores. He's not allowed in scores, so, you know, he's jealous. Number five. Ronnie should be keeping the hallway of the K-Rock studio clear and secure. Instead, Ronnie yells at workers who walk by and insults them or makes them feel intimidated. Yeah, okay. It's so bad that many of the salespeople and secretaries will stay in their office until Ronnie leaves the building. Is that true? Well, the salespeople, uh, the rule is here, technically, the salespeople don't belong back here during the show. And Ronnie lets you don't know that, Chauncey. Number six. <laughs> Ronnie openly criticizes Howard during the show from his chair. Chair. As how as bad as that is, it's even worse because Ronnie's plastic chair is eight feet away from the green room, where guests can hear his every nasty comment. How do you think that makes Howard look? Not true. No. What did you hear him say? Well, for my well, no, experience... for one thing, Chauncey can't stay in the green room. <laughs> He's out in the hall trying to observe everything. I do, I do. And this is yeah, exactly. Room. And if you were in the green room where you belong with the door closed, you wouldn't hear anything. Howard, I sit in that green room with the other guests, and their eyes, well, they can't believe what they're hearing sometimes. Yes, Chauncey, of what course. What did you hear, right. Chauncey? What did he what hear? Did, what did you hear? What did you hear? You want to when you were in the green room with the door closed with the guests, what did you that's, hear? No, the door's not always closed. Not standing next front. to me with your stupid smirk on your face. The door's not always closed. The door's open. In fact, even when the door's closed, you, you, Ronnie, you yell so loud that yeah, when the door's okay. closed, you still yes. can hear you yes. in the green room. Well, what did you hear? What'd you hear? <laughs> What'd you hear? I don't I don't have super comments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Comments. Here we go, another right. bull crap story. Yeah, throw yeah, them a bull crap story. Go I ahead. Can, because I'm not giving you an exact word for I can paraphrase when we have paraphrase. Yeah, go ahead, make, you know, make up stuff like you usually do about Howard. Come on. Go ahead. Number eight. You make up stuff for the show so you can get on here. Go ahead. Number seven. Ronnie is unstable and irrational. That's right, I'm very unstable. So you better, said, stay, you better stay away from me then. That said, I can't imagine Howard putting the life of his children in Ronnie's hands when he drives them to events, etc. I only hope Howard has other drivers taking over this trusted task. Yes, we do. We have other drivers to handle the children. I, I, I can't be near children. Number eight, Ronnie is a NASCAR fanatic. That's that right. Is, that itself That's is reason right. for dismissal. Nothing Two wrong, more. Nothing wrong with that. What, do you, what is your uh, big hobby? Number nine. What is your hobby? Ronnie is... Ronnie is a little boy's name, or it can be a woman's name. Which is it, Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ronnie, what is, Ronnie is a ridiculous name for a grown man. Yeah, what about Chauncey? What kind of name is that? You know, like... Yeah, I'm, what kind I'm, of name is Chauncey? I never heard anybody else but you named Chauncey. There's, there's an NBA You're basketball a player named Chauncey. There's an NBA basketball Yeah, seven-foot black guy. I don't know any grown men named Ronnie. Oh, really? 
Number 10. Okay. Finally, wherever Casey is, someone tells me that Ronnie will soon be his roommate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a pretty low blow, dude. Oh. oh, man. Sorry, man. Yeah, well. You inspired me, Ronnie. Yeah, come up, come up to the show when KC's back and make that comment. Yeah. I didn't say where he is. I didn't even say where he is either. I just said make that comment when KC comes back. And Ronnie, don't put words I don't in want people's mouths. To affect the way I'm treated when I come on the show now, I still want you to be polite. Not, I don't have to treat you. You're not a guest here. You weren't a guest the other day. I'm not a guest. I'm not, am the I girl, the girl, I'm the model, am I? the model, so, the so-called, the so-called stripping model with yellow teeth am I? that you brought up here was the guest, not you. When I'm in that studio, I would have rather guest. seen uh, Supersonic Ivy naked than that girl. <laughs> <laughs> she looks better. She was sitting in the green room. Sarah, you're a big follower. What's your problem? What, you got Ronnie, no girlfriends. Ronnie, this is what I'm talking about. Your job is not to comment on the guest. I Here can you go with, again. You're proving Dude, you're putting me up against the wall now. Place. You're putting me up against the wall, you fool. I can you're do anything I want now. You're supposed to sit in your chair. And just make sure don't tell me what I'm supposed clear. to do. You don't know what comments. I'm supposed to do. Dude, you don't know what I'm supposed to do. I do know. You wish you were doing what I'm doing. That's why you're so upset. I may get your job, Ronnie, because you're yeah. going to be away for a little while. Come on. Be my guest. Anyway, uh, Robin is going to try and get into the new limo in her mini skirt. <laughs> the, set, uh, the soap opera continues, I presume, huh? Yes. You it's not going to stop. Come on. <laughs> not stopping. Okay. It's funny to watch. Why? You know? Why? Why, do it to yourself, why are you, do it to yourself. shut up, Shorty, you moron. <laughs> why would you let her have to get in the car now before I even, never mind. What am I wasting my time? We want to do it before. So now you're getting, I heard you're getting a new car, is that right? So now, I'm leaning toward getting a new car. So when you get the new car. I'm going to discuss it with you off the air. So when we get the new car, when you get the new car, I should say. Well, you're uh, going to get it. Well, no, uh, when, you get, know. when you get the new car. It's going to take a long time to build, you know? Right. So it's going to be eight, nine weeks. So maybe, because I know you're so unhappy with this one, maybe I should get you another limo guy for the eight weeks I should take a leave of absence. Okay. How's okay, that? If you want to, go Because I want you to be happy. I didn't ask for a different limo guy, but if you need, if you need, if it's Shanti says you need to go to I a uh, you hospital. To I want you, I, want, I decided yesterday, after all, the, all that's been going on, I decided yesterday that you have to be happy. <laughs> you have to be happy. Now you got it. Okay? Finally. I'm the guy who uses a lot. I think, I think that I should, Why are you being I should, to to me? I should leave for about eight weeks while that car's being built. You know, if you want to, go ahead. Okay. But every it's up to you. I'll go find a different limo. No, no, I'm no, 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 why would you want to live for, with it for eight weeks until we get I another one? I said I have one? no problem with living with it for right. eight weeks. Why so then why could why you, why could, why why are you, why you why challenging will me? you not let us make the improvements for I didn't say not to. Then why are you making her get in the car now? Why? Because it's make, funny. Let me make it's the, funny. You bought a car. You bought a car that women... Let me make the improvements first and then let her try getting the car. You bought a car. No, no. The, you bought a car. This is the way you fixed it for use. And you fixed it. What? This is the way you fixed it for use. We want to see how to use it now. I didn't. Because he would not cooperate with uh, me. What do you mean? That's why the car came out the way. Why am I not cooperating? Why am I not cooperating? From the beginning. You went and if you, you were you there, you the car. If you were I there, didn't have time to be with you getting if cars you made. you were there. Sorry, don't have time. Well, then, Not my job. So then now you got to put me through the aggravation of getting another car because you would take a I'm half hour out of your time. Everybody, time out. The only thing is to don't try tell me your problems, problems, okay? Don't it's tell not me my problem. problem. you got to go through aggravation. You have yes, a problem. Ronnie. I don't have a problem. Not you have a problem. job. No, yeah, you have, have a problem. Have a problem. You. Now you have a problem. No, I don't have one. No, you yeah. actually you do. I don't have problem. Now you do. I don't have one. I don't have a problem. Yes, you do. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, you do. <laughs> Watch how life can change Wait on a dime. Wait a minute, yeah. Ronnie, you're being the classic stupido now. You're not. You I'm are not. not. Every solution you have proposed has been to your own detriment. Do you understand that? I just, you're, build, you're digging yourself no, I, a grave. I just said 
I just say, and hey, you back, can't say it again. Dig so a little happy. deeper no. than that. See, hole. when I try to make them happy, it's no good either. You haven't, you haven't tried to make me happy. I said to you, I don't want your you to Your attitude sucks. If you're, so you're yelling at me. me. It's, it's inappropriate so for you to yell at me. You're bored. If you are so I... happy, yes. then I would. I don't want you to have to ride in that car for eight, nine weeks until another car is built. I didn't ask for that. I told you what I want. You're unhappy. I couldn't be any more clear. I don't want you to be unhappy. Uh, you're making me unhappy now because you don't listen. I listen. Believe you're not me, I've cooperating. Been Dude, you sound like a whining little bitch. You sound like a girlfriend. Yeah, okay. You sound like I a sound dumb like a chick. Girl. Yeah, I am a dumb chick. I'm more... asking to be kicked I've, out. I've had more problems with women. This is what women go, you don't like me. You want to I break up with me. Man. I didn't say you didn't like me. Hey, dude. That was the other thing. Dude, said that. you're mentally you like me. ill. That's all I got to say. Where's all your music right. about you being a girl? Right. Where is all your songs? You're out of control. You think Chauncey's right? You're out of control. All right, look. Let me explain this clearly. Here's it. It's simple. True, I don't like the car. True, I wasn't there with you to pick it up. We all acknowledge that. We've all moved on. Not at Ronnie. No, I haven't moved on. Oh, you haven't? No, <laughs> well, clearly. Not what did you move on with? He won't move on. Dude, I don't like the car. Okay, fine. So I told you we'll build another car, but I don't that's want not you what to, you told me. I don't want you to be that's, no, that's not what I you told told me. that the other day. I went to order the car, and you no. said to me, don't do nothing. That's what right. You I do said, don't do anything. Do Whatever. When did you start talking like that? When did we, he must have dropped out of school. <laughs> There's no way. Whatever. <laughs> don't do nothing. Whatever. What's your problem? All right. Now you're going to no, criticize. One thing? You know, you're going to criticize the way no, I wait. talk, too, right? May I say one thing? Why don't you just hang me from the ceiling? Well, look, we might Dude, have to. Dude, you have no idea how bad you're coming off. I really don't care. People think you're psychologically unstable. I might be. Which is something know. I knew, but I never wanted the world to see. Right. I'm well, telling you, people are asking me, is Ronnie okay? Does Ronnie still have a job? Because they no. think he should be out of here. Ronnie is thinking clearly. Ronnie's thinking very clearly. Oh, very very clearly. Talking. Let's let let's see if I can make sense to you. You you, you bought a car. I didn't like it. Let's put it. Let's let's get it straight. Here we go again. I bought a car for you. Okay. You bought a car. You didn't for buy you. it for me. Who do I work for? Who, who drives? Who owns the car? Me, but who do I work for? You own the car. Who you bought I it for you. For, though? Me. That's it. You. So I bought the car for right. you. you bought, right. You okay. bought the car for me. Well, why that makes a difference, I don't know. It makes a lot of difference. You bought the car for me, and I don't like it. End of story. All the more reason that he should so be just saying take it, throw the garbage. something else right. if he bought the car for right. you. I'm not suggesting you throw the I said I need your cooperation. I'm going to repeat this. We have to look into getting a different car. Find out prices. Find out what you can sell your car for. We went through this already. That's right. Yeah. And well, I need you to do it. Like and then you don't get it. And every time I sit down and talk to you about it off the air, it's like... Well, let's wait and see. So then I sat let's down with you. Improvements. No, that's not what I said. I'll tell you exactly what I said. I said, I'm leaning toward getting a new car, yeah. but don't do anything yet. Everybody should be in the car after the show. Let me Did I you. say don't Are do you anything yet? Using him? <laughs> I can't be any more clear. I he's tormenting me. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I'm not doing anything he's to you. He's tormenting me. You're tormenting yourself, Ronnie. He's tormenting me, okay? Mm. He's forcing me. And what get, would you do, Tom? You're in management. Right. You have to you have to run a big company. You have many people working for you. People like Cabby and people, you know, people who, are, who are, you know, tough uh, people. What uh, what do you do with this situation? I mean, I think it's fairly cut and dry, actually. Go ahead. The, um, he bought the car, bought the car so that you would be happy in it. You're not happy in the car. So we've got to find out how much it's going to cost to get a car that you're going to be happy in. Right. I've already looked into it. Okay, and then as quickly as possible, get a car that you're going to be happy in, and that's going to keep his number one client happy. That's right. I mean, if you take out, take the personalities out of it, take everything out of it, just look at it. Here's A and B. A's not happy. B is the driver. B has the car. Who thought he was buying a car that would make A happy? Absolutely. He's not happy. So what's it going to cost to get out of the problem? Because A doesn't want to be driven around in that car. Wait a minute. A, a isn't happy, and B is the driver. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's on your side. I, mean, I, would, I would tell you. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on but what is the attitude? I don't understand. 
understand. I, I what love Ronnie. Ronnie and I have a, I think we have a very good relationship. And um, and I said, as we're driving into work this morning, I drive, drive on 55th Street. That would be C, 55th Street. <laughs> 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 There's a, no, there's a long, black, like, low-slung, I don't know if it's a Lincoln or Cadillac, stretch limo, hot, beautiful. Right. But that and, wasn't good enough and, for him. And, uh, you know, and un, kind of understated, classy. It wasn't good enough for him. No, even, hold it a second, dude. You see, if You came was, to me and right. said you wanted to get a truck stretch, and I said, okay. And what was the reason why I wanted to do that? I don't know. What is the reason? Uh, I, I, no, I, I, because you like at, driving a at truck. At 5.15 in the morning when you were getting in the car the past couple of months, what did you say to me? Your last car was what difficult to get to in me? and out of. But your solution was to get a truck. And I said, and I said fine. there would be more room to get in after. Ronnie, have to, you would have to bend it, down there is and get in. But Ronnie, the reality is your new truck is even worse. People are ripping their clothing getting in. People can't climb in. Robin's going to climb into the truck when we get back from commercial. In a skirt, no, we're going to see, we're going to see oh, panties. She's climb into the car? She's not getting oh, in. Yes, she is. No, she's not. And we're, you're going to get in, and she's going to get in. A, you're going to see panties. She's not getting in. You're going to see everything. I'm now afraid I, I may not be able to Because I'm not car. opening the door. Oh, you yeah. want, you want. It's my car. I command oh, you. Oh, now it's your car. It is my car. Now I pay. And that car is sitting down there. I'm paying for you to be here, and I'm paying for you downstairs. Unfortunately, it's his car. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> but it's not your car. One of the things that you, you know, you, it's okay to make a mistake in business, but admit your mistakes and get out of this quickly. It wasn't my mistake, damn it. He's compounding his mistake. Admit it, a Ronnie. mistake. Shut up, Schwartz. We're not saying it's your mistake. It's B's mistake. Right, B's mistake. <laughs> B makes a mistake. But B is compounding his mistake. <laughs> A identifies it right. as a mistake. Which brings us to All right, G. So here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing, and I'm going to say it again so the whole world can hear. The present car I have, I am living with. Ronnie wants to make certain changes to it. He's entitled to do that. He wants to make it more comfortable while we have the Wait, car. you're pretty much, you're sure no, well, if you, you want if a you do car. not want the car, I will not make any changes to it. Okay, I do not want the car. Look me in the face and tell me I do not the car. want to. No, no, I won't do that yet. I won't do that yet. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because I still need you to go price things out and do what I've been telling you. And I'll give you the name why of one of the cars I like. Why should it make a difference then if you don't want because the Because I don't. Why should it make a difference? Because if I don't like the prices you get, I have someone else in I don't want to deal with anyone else. Well, it's not up to you. I got to get a car. Well, then it's up to you to swallow everything. I'm huh? trying to. If I'm trying to help out. I'm the business guy. Then if I have to swallow it, I'll swallow. All right. If you're so unhappy, fine. Nobody's already volunteered. Why to do are that. you so angry? I mean, the, 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 wait. Answer Robin's question. Why are you so angry about this? Because I want to deal with the people I want to deal with. I'm not going to be told who to deal with if I have to get another car. Okay. Maybe. That's why. But you can deal with it. No, as long as you cooperate, you're right. As if as long as you cooperate, it's fine. And as long as you cooperate, okay? I'm not going to go through this again, all right? What have you? What have you gone through? With this car. What did you go through? What have I gone through? You didn't build the car. No, but look at the crap I gotta go through what now. What crap? I asked you, I told you I don't like the car. You went ballistic. Oh, this is, oh yeah, okay. So what do you care? The car, what do I care? Just take it and throw it in the river. No, wait, wait, I didn't wait, suggest wait a minute, that. Howard. The reason you've been dealing Ridiculous. with other people is because Ronnie refused to do anything. He brings it on himself. Two minutes ago, you're saying you're quitting. You're, you're going off for eight weeks. Go off. If you want to go off, you go off. Why do you say if I'm, I'm so bad, go off. Why did you say go I'm off. quitting? Go off. You said eight weeks, you're not driving me. I did to me, not. You might I as well said leave. if you are unhappy... Riding in the car while the other car is being built. And, you know, because there's so much discussion going on outside. But, Ronnie, really, what am I going to say? Try to listen, because I like it. You say you, no, I do like it. Yeah. Say you and Howard weren't friends, because you do have a friend. Say you me. Say you, no, but say you guys weren't friends, right? <laughs> the conversation you just had is... Howard the client wants it, and you don't want to change it. I'm doing it. He would say I'm to you very it. nicely, Howard would say to you very nicely, you know what, it's great, it's been great working with you, you don't have the product I, I now need, so I will move ahead. And we're all saying, you are literally painting Howard into a corner, almost <laughs> begging him to, to do something about it. When it doesn't need to happen. Him into a corner, but you are. are. But you are. You're not, you're not listening. This is what I've been trying to point out. You're, you're digging yourself Where is my side of the You're not pleasant all to work with. Ronnie, you're not pleasant. I'm happy with the car. 
okay? But you're, I don't want him to have to ride in the car he's unhappy with. For the, uh, that's next, not what I asked it's, for. It's going to take eight, nine weeks to build a car. Just show that's to, fine. You have okay. to do what he wants. Ronnie. Seriously, I mean, he wants something. He's not getting it. He doesn't want to. Eight, nine weeks to dude, build it. Dude, dude, I don't want him to be unhappy riding in the car. Dude, I don't want him sitting on the floor. Dude, look at okay? me. I'm going to say this one last time. So maybe he should ride in the car. That's he'll be more comfortable in until we get another one. You're being. That's what I'm saying. You're being angry. Why is that wrong? I'll tell you why it's wrong. Yeah, you're, why? You're angry. Why is that wrong? You're I'm not listening. You, you gotta listening. stop talking for a second. You're Listen. angry. You're belligerent. You're difficult to work with. So coming up with a solution that you makes sense. It's so difficult oh, for 19 years. Go ahead. Stop talking. Stop talking. Shut up, Chauncey. Coming up with a solution with you. I suggest you hang up on Chauncey because he's only going to aggravate you. No, he loves Chauncey. He's <laughs> not. He's what more to torment you. Come up, coming up. <laughs> yeah, don't hang up, Chauncey. Stay there. Coming up with a solution with you is very difficult because it's uncomfortable talking to you. Right. And right are. away, all of your suggestions are, well, do it yourself. Well, if you don't like it, do it I yourself. Do it well, yourself. take care of it yourself. Said, I'm I not going to do I anything. Said, I don't want to work with them. You know, I don't want to hear that. I just, I just said, you're difficult well, to work with. You're doing. I just said, I'll build another car, okay? And you but said you take off eight weeks. The guy he want, his friend, whoever is doing Dude, you've made a bunch of different, okay? you've made a bunch of different statements. You're all over the place. I'm not all over the place. We went through it just All I've said to you is... I'm not happy with the car. Good, we get rid of it. Okay, okay. Howard, what color would you like? Can Black, I silver, or gray? Can I just make one closing statement? You won't answer me that either. I'm going to walk out of here. This is something you really need to think about. Seriously, Ronnie. This came up on Monday, and today's Friday. No, it came up on Friday. No, it, okay, and today's Friday, and it's just it's too long. Now. It's just too late. long to be spending on Friday, okay? It's been hours of entertainment, though. <laughs> yeah, but it really is just too long to be spending on Friday. It's started. <laughs> But it's been a week. That guy. That's right. It came up before we went to school. Right. Whatever his name is. It's been a week. If yes. It so sad, it'd be funny. Yes, Bob. Yes, Bob. Howard, let me tell you something. I'm a driver here in New York. If you, if you, as a customer, you are always right. I can't even imagine that you've been talking to this guy for a week like this, and the way he talks back to him, he's still there. Uh, I mean, look, I, I like the guy very much, but he is difficult to work with. I, I could understand liking somebody, but then there comes a point where yeah. things are just wrong. If, if I got a limo and you didn't like it, what I would say is, I'm sorry, Howard. I'll, I'll get a new one this year. He doesn't even have to apologize. It's nobody's fault. Right. It's not a yeah, bad thing. But even I, I'd be a little upset because the customer is always right. And I'd say, I'm sorry, yeah, Howard. I said to Ronnie, I said, I don't know if this is going to work out. You know, people are ripping their clothes. It's, I know my parents are getting in it this week and we're getting together. Oh, yeah? Maybe we shouldn't do that. I can't imagine. No, I want them to get in it. I want, I, it's going to be great. I'm going to try to have a camera crew when they try to get in. Maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Maybe we should send somebody else. Maybe See, I, I mean, think for about a little while, we could have some fun idea. with this, but Ronnie won't even let that happen. No, but he I just, he just, so he's, he's taking, here's what's happened. The car has become an extension of him. Yes. Right, exactly. It's him. You go. It's, we're rejecting You're right. him. You're right. I know. I yeah, know. I know. That's right. where this anger. Right. And you have anger like it's a criticism You're of you. Right. You're right. Detach yourself. The car isn't you. You are right. We love you. We right. don't I like the wrong. car. <laughs> but even this you're right, I am wrong thing is it's, it's belligerent, man. You're right, man. He's going crazy on you, Howard. It's I, antagonistic. I don't well, yeah. Yes, Captain James. I will take care of it today. Don't worry about it. Just Captain. It'll be taken care of. Hey, you know how Ronnie should watch Driving Miss Daisy to learn what a real <laughs> chauffeur is all about. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pass water. I gotta make water. I'm sorry, Miss Daisy. <laughs> yes, Wayne Siegel. Hey, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> What's up, Wayne? Hey, listen, Ronnie. If there's anything that I could do to help you out of this mess. You want me, you know what you can do for me? Go ahead. You can hang up the phone. <laughs> you can't help him. Why? Why is what Wayne's your buddy? I don't have buddies right now. Wayne's your friend. I don't need any buddies. Wayne, what's up here? I don't need any buddies. Ronnie, I don't understand. What's the problem? All you gotta do is separate yourself from the car. Nobody denies no, it's the no, best no, of intent. What is in that car? His mother's spirit or something. <laughs> nice. I'll tell you, it's my mother the car. There you go. I mean, Ronnie, all he wants to do is change the car. He doesn't right. want to change it. I said I was going to do it. I'm doing it. But I, said, I also said if he's unhappy riding in it, I don't want him to be unhappy. Okay. That's, okay. that's no good either. I didn't you say that. that. What's, if, what's your, your solution? If your solution is that you're not going to drive, that's being angry, that's being right. belligerent. Right. If your solution is for the next eight weeks while you get the replacement car... You I can't get a replacement car. Can I, can I ask car. my question? Okay. I don't I want a replacement I didn't ask for a replacement car. car. Can, I, can I finish my question? I didn't ask for a replacement car, dude. When did I ever ask you for one? Because I'm tired of hearing about how you're so unhappy. 
I don't want I'm to I'm unhappy with happy. you, not the car now. Yeah, right. Now I can live with the car. Yeah. You're the yeah. problem. Really? You want to live with the car? No. To us, Here's what I said. I can live money. with I'm gonna, I said, I'm not in a rush. Let me think about what I want to get. I don't want to make the same mistake. Gotcha. And I said, in the meantime, I can drive around in this car. It's not a horrible car. It's fine. I will drive in it. And then when I'm done with my decision, we'll take care of it. Okay. That's the way I couldn't be more reasonable. It's Ronnie who suggested taking himself out of the equation. So Ronnie's, Ronnie's a loon. He's threatening me all I'm over the place. You. I'm not going to drive you. Dude, I didn't say that. That's a bad threat I, for you. I, you want to take yourself out of this mix? You I, don't want to work here. That's your problem. I didn't say that. These are crazy solutions you're offering. You got, you're off the wall, dude. I don't dude. want you to be unhappy. I told you. But I told you what would make me happy. You happy. know what? Would he, he would be unhappy with trying to live with the car for three years, not eight weeks. Yeah. It's You're not of, listening. It's kind of like if we, one of our advertisers said, you know, I'm not happy with the current spots. And we said, okay, we'll then cancel your spots. Or, you know what, let's work on new creative. We want you to stay with uh, us. And we can help you. See, Tom would have commit suicide and go, right. Right. hey, you know what? Kind of saying, F you, you don't like our spots. We're, we're not suicide. taking your money. Then we won't run them. Do you think I'm that stupid? I'm going to commit suicide? No. You're doing it. You're doing it. Slowly. You're taking yourself out of the mix. You don't want to work on the new car. You don't want to work. You don't want to drive in the morning until I get a new car. I you're you're, you're, you're See, off the wall. No, I didn't say I didn't, didn't, say I didn't want yourself. to. I didn't say I did not want to. That's what you to. said. I you're said, making suggestions that are off the wall. I you're said, not a business You're man. not happy. I want to make you happy. But it's not, it's not you're not making me happy. Yeah, you're not I want you to be happy. comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not listening. Word, but you're not listening. I came up with a solution. What is your, I said, when I'm ready to discuss the new car with you, I will. And then... I will continue to be in this car till the new car is ready. And would you like me to make the improvements in the car until the I new car care. is ready? I don't care. That's up no, to you. No, answer me. No, okay. you don't have to bother. Okay, fine. Fine. Ronnie, Ronnie it's, it's done. to drive in the car It's done. the car is ready. Sound Wait, fine. all right. It's time to hang up. Twice Bye. Have a nice afternoon. <laughs> what did you want to say, Wayne? I'm not going to be rude to you. I was going to say, if, if Howard is willing to drive in the car until the new car is ready, well, then the decision has been made. And if Howard needs to sit with you to discuss whatever it is about the car, if eight weeks is 12 weeks or 15 weeks, right. it's Howard's choice. If it's 12 months, Howard's made the decision to hang out. What's the problem? No problem. Have a nice day. You need Wayne to decide. Park outside. We have girls that want to take their tops off for you. Get it together, man. I don't think you that's get it possible. Together. You're telling him to do something he Ronnie, can't do. Ronnie, get it together. I'm not doing it, man. <laughs> get it he together. Gonna do I'm not that? doing it, man. I've never. I'm not doing it. We, you know what? We tapped his loony vein. I'm going to think it's funny. Well, all right, we got to take a break. Exactly. I was going to call in at six o'clock this morning to wonder, you know, to ask what time is the beat up Howie, uh, Ronnie session. Well, listen. All I'm saying is, when we come back from commercial, Robin will attempt. We have the 2001 music. Okay. And Robin will. You, do you need a bole? I'm not doing it. Robin. I may need one. Robin is going to climb into the limo in a short skirt. If Ronnie lets her. I'm glad you think it's funny. Ronnie, pause for one second. Ronnie, Mark, can you talk to me for one second? Please, please, please. Come on. Where is this at? Where is this at? Where it's at? We're getting another car. That's where it's at. And it's his decision whether he wants to ride in this car until the other one's done. If he doesn't, I'll get somebody else to take care of him until I get the car. What about you, though? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. I am fine, all right? I'm perfectly fine. Despite what everybody else says, I'm fine, okay? So, you, so the, car, the car is not an extension of you. You're okay with it? Interpret it any way you want, okay? If you think that... Fine. That's what it is. It's an extension. It's an extension of my dick. Robin's downstairs. Let me see if I can pull this up. I gotta get Robin on a cell phone. <clears throat> She's just gonna try and climb into Ronnie's limo. Hold on. Hey, Doug. Give the phone to Robin. I knew the phone wouldn't work. Yeah, no hey, Robin. Doug. Hello? Oh, hi, Robin. Hi there. Yeah, the phone. I knew the phone wouldn't work. It's in the garage. Why is it you, not working? No, it's okay. Why, why do you have a blanket around your body? It was cold down here. I was waiting for you guys to come oh, on the air. I thought something and, was wrong. No, no. All right. Why don't you Howard, try... Howard, there is something wrong. There Howard, is get something it wrong up there. Ronnie, won't, Ronnie wouldn't give us the keys, but I think I talked him into it. He's on his way to town. Oh, what's oh, wrong okay. with him? Yeah, he wouldn't come down. He wasn't going to let us do this. His exact words were, when is, the, mean, when is the clown show over? 
you know what? He's doing everything for attention. Because every time you say do something, he waits until we're on the air. All I know is to I'm make paying. His objection. All I know is I'm paying right now for that limo to service. I'm, I'm renting the car from him. Well, well, he has to open the car. Well, he, we've been asking him for five minutes to come down here. So now he's showing up. Okay. So here he is. <laughs> I'm watching on a television screen. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Tell them the clown show's over in about 20 minutes. Yeah, the clown show will be over in a few minutes. Yeah. All right, Ronnie's opening the car. All right, now you have to get in unassisted. I want to see what happens with your screen. All right. I hope you're not modest, Robin, because we're probably going to see everything. <laughs> so if you... Please, can you open the door? <laughs> All right. Let me see. Let's you get see. In. Oh, it's not. It's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she just fell down. <laughs> All right, well, describe what happened. Well, you know, I'm trying to, to be modest, and so if you get yourself up, but the car is so high, once you try to step in, you fall backward. <laughs> now try and get out demurely. Let me uh, see you get out. That. Let me see you get out. I'll never be able to get out. Let's see. Keep the camera there right. so I can see some, I bet you I see panties. <laughs> demurely. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, she can't get up. Uh, <laughs> I can't get up. She can't get up. I can't do the power. Why can't you? Oh, no. This is how these things happen. Are you all right? I can't get up that way either. Keep trying. Don't let him help you. All right. Don't try Let's it. Let's see. What uh, I do is I sit on the floor and get out. Well, that's what I can see now while you do that. I can't, I got heels on. I can't do this. You try and do it holding a bag, too. <laughs> I'm saying, but at least you're wearing pants. She's got, she's trapped. <laughs> be careful, be careful. Yeah. I'm, get I'm getting out now, Ronnie, but it took me three tries. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. Nice <laughs> <laughs> Took three tries. All right, Robin, thanks. Thank you. There you go. Wow. What is it, Jason? Still yelling going on. Hello? Got cut off. Ronnie's clearly upset. You think you live an exciting life? I just rode up in the elevator with Ronnie. What was he doing, yelling at you? Oh, good acting. Good acting. Thank Were you, you acting? No, I wasn't acting at all. I, I told, and then he says he demonstrates how you get in and out of the car. He literally rolls into the car. And he thinks that's easy. A woman ain't gonna do it. Plus, I'm usually holding stuff. Right, but he rolled into the car. You don't just get into that car. No. And then he jumps out, and I said, Ronnie, change into my skirt and these heels, and then do the same thing. I'm glad you think it's funny. Great acting. Uh, she wasn't acting. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Beth, 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 Beth went to a whole skirt. In there. Let me ask you a question. I swear, I'm not getting, making that up. Getting in and out of a regular limo with a mini skirt on, you're not going to see her legs all, her skirt all the way up when she gets out? I don't know. The question. But, the, but the thing is, it's hard for women to climb in I there. got into and out I'm of a town car this morning. I'm getting rid of the car. No, 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 no. Okay. So why are you getting so defensive? I'm getting rid of it. It didn't work. I'm not for ready. I'm getting rid of it. You're the one making I a big deal. I am getting rid of it. You're are making a big deal. Are you happy now? That's all I want to know. Are good, you happy? Good, Go out and chill. I'm getting Go out and chill. Are you happy? Go out and chill. I want to know if you're happy. Now, I'm not interested in telling you what, what uh, about my uh, happiness. Uh, why not? It's none of your business. I want you to be happy. You can leave now. Thank you. Go ahead. Sheesh. You're insane. Come and see. Every guy down there was screaming, Ronnie, she's a girl. You got She can't get into the car like you. Well, he should have given you a booster. But I'm telling you, he roll, he, he sit, gets up on that jump thing, that jumper thing, and then he rolls into the car. That's not how you're supposed to get into a car. No. Yeah. All right, let's, let's uh, move on. And how's a girl going to do that in a skirt? What's up? Well, just that, you know, Ronnie was able to get in the car easy by hopping on that thing and getting, like, you're like a foot 
taller than a foot and a half taller than It's not that easy for you to hop on that. I can't even get my foot on that little thing. But did you see he rolls? He doesn't just step into the car. He rolled himself onto the seat. It's pretty and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to do the limo roll, but you got to do it like four times. Oh, what are you saying? Go back to your thing. Oh, my Hey, wait a second. You see, hey, Ronnie. Jason, you afraid of it? Like, Jason just, like, freaked out. Like, well, of course. No, I mean, I, I, I wasn't it's expecting this reaction. Get into the car. Let it die, okay? <laughs> Go back to your computer, all right? Who put you in charge? Put you in my chair. Well, He's running the show now. But Ronnie's running really the show. Yeah. Hey, Jason, I guess you're not allowed to talk. Ronnie don't want you talking. No. <laughs> it's the Ronnie no, show. Because it's total bull crap, okay? It's total bull crap. What is? <laughs> what she's telling you, man. She couldn't no get in. She had no problem getting in and out. How did all these guys down in the garage and they were all like clapping saying that they saw yeah. Ronnie? Right, right. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody saw everything. She did a great the... acting job. Oh, oh, oh. Like I wanted oh, to do that. She got a leg up. Please. I'm telling you, my girlfriend ripped her dress. My dress isn't even, my skirt isn't that tight. Right. If this was a tapered skirt, you wouldn't be able to get into that car at all. Howard, as long as you can do a good somersault, you can get into that car, no problem. <laughs> what is it? I was just going to hold the mic, but if he wants me to unload, I'll unload. You're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. Yeah, oh yeah. Right. You're my buddy, right? <laughs> my buddy. No! <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's buddy. Come here. I have no friends. I told you that a long time ago. You need to leave today with a resolution. This is like a circle that's going to end the circle. Just end it. Say I screwed up. Even I didn't it. screw up, okay? Say the car screwed up. It's not the Howard's <laughs> Meets. The, Howard's not the, meets. the car isn't screwed up, okay. and Ronnie's not screwed yeah, up. See, now you, now it's, okay, it's, okay, it's, I'm not happy with the car, right, so but he's, he's, on, but he's his car reaction car. is bizarre. Who, whose reaction? It's Ronnie's. Oh, I know. It's Everything crazy. is Ronnie. No, nothing's Howard. It's all Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, it's Friday again. It's a week. Yeah, so it's like, all Ronnie. It's nothing, Howard. He needs to leave today with the. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Nothing. Right? What am I doing wrong? I, I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I built, I built the car for you. I made a mistake. You didn't make a mistake. You, you don't like it. You I don't can, like it. That's it's all. It's gonna be replaced. Don't okay. worry about it. Okay. It's done. So Come what's on. wrong with Howard? What did I do? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't like a car. I didn't do anything. Am I, am I guilty of man, something? Man, didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. Nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Didn't do nothing. <laughs> Jeff, what's up? Please, <laughs> big pussy. <laughs> right. That's me. That's, you know. That's me. That's right, Jeff. What's up? What's wrong with you? What, what are you, are you I heard you're driving around in a trailer now. Is that true? I ain't driving it, you dumbass. That's what I'm living in. <laughs> Let's get a string. Do you have wheel? Do you have big wheels on it and stuff? Do you move yet? Uh, yeah, yeah he, he's, because he's a freeloader, his mom had to sell their house, and now they're moving into a trailer community. Yeah. Dude, you ought to yeah, get a, or, How about getting a job, Jeff, and helping your mom out so she doesn't have to lose her house? You think I want to lose my house? Well, yeah, I think you do, because you don't do anything. He's too busy being a drunk. for 26 years. Why don't you clean up your act and get a job? Howard, it's not that easy. You could do things. Oh, it's just as easy as getting a new car. Come on, man. You can do it. Just stop oh, yeah, drinking. Uh, Go into a rehab center. Get yourself straightened out, you bum. Cabra Cadabra, now I don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's that easy? Go take a look at yourself in the mirror. Like what, pulling a sober rabbit out of a hat. Look what you look like. Everybody walks around with those big duty stains on their underwear. <laughs> it's not dirty. <laughs> look at you. It's a blister. Look at you, you're a mess. It's a boil. <laughs> you're a freaking wreck. It's a blister oh, from wow. sitting down. Goddamn clinic and get fixed up, will you please? <laughs> clinic. Yeah. Go to the clinic, you big pussy. You don't have the money to go to rehab, go to a clinic. They'll take care of you. Hey, right, Jeff, right, what about, what about making a vow? And then tell your mother, I'm moving out, Mom, and I'm getting a job. Sure, I'm getting a job, yeah. Mom. Sure, you're a bum. Mom, your son's going to take care of you now. He used to come here. He used to come. He comes here and he cries for money. Oh, no, he, no, Casey no, promised no, me two hundred and fifty dollars, no. but he only gave me two hundred. And he cries like a little woman. Sort of like you. Get out and get a job, dude. What do you think of that, what, Jeff? What, 40-something years old? Tough love. Huh? How Ronnie, old are you? Ronnie delivering his special angry yeah, tough love. Yeah, I think Ronnie's uh, How old taking you? over. How old hey, are better, you? Hey, better on Jeff the drunk than me. Yeah, really. How old are you, Jeff, you bum? How old are you? How old am I? 32. Yeah, you're not 37. You're like 45. Look at you. Look what you look like. 67. You're a wreck. You're a wreck of a person. 67, bitch. Go get something. Go get a job. Straighten yourself out. Change your underwear. <laughs>
<laughs> Start with changing your... Well, hey, you know what, Jeff? It wouldn't be a bad idea to stop the drinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ronnie says go to the fuck, Audie. Give me a Yankee tickets, Audie. I gotta go to the Yankee game. Oh, yeah, guess what? Grubba. I might be going to St. Louis. Yeah, who'd you grub that from? For the World Series. Yeah, who'd you grub that deal from, huh? Don't worry about it. Get a job and make some money and go on your own, you bum. Shut up, Ron. Come on, you asked for it. Come on. Come on. What do you got to say? What do you got to say? <laughs> You're making me so angry! Oh. Yeah, this oh. isn't fair! Ronnie's gonna be tough one! Hey, you wanna It's not duty stains, it's a booster for the oh, I'm sorry, it's blood stains. I'm 37 years old! And I'm not just gonna wave a magic goddamn wand and stop drinking! <laughs> so when are you moving into the trailer? Um, we, yeah. got, we wanna come shoot that. Yeah. <laughs> we wanna put that up on our Instagram. I think Monday we're moving. Is that what Monday, time? Is that what time to try? Monday. Is that what time to track the trailers coming to move your house? Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna put it down on. No, he blocks. sold his house. No, no, but that's how they put these trailers down. They put them on cinder blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I know. Years ago, my father had one upstate up near him. Yeah. And they put it. On, they take it off the wheels and they put it on cinder blocks. So it's like on kind of like a foundation, <laughs> so it doesn't fall over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, if it rains too hard. I just feel bad for Jeff's mom. I mean, she's going to lose her house because... It was bad enough being in the house with Jeff. Yeah, I'm, not the only, I'm not my mother's only child. Yeah, you're not, you're not your mother's only problem then, I guess, huh? Hey, dude, so when you, so you, so uh, what, how much money did she get for the old house? Like 80-something. 80 80-something down? Yeah. You know, Jeff is saying he's not the only child. I hope he's the only one still at home. Right. Yeah, the, the other well, kids don't all live at home drunk, do they? No. No, my brother's more successful. He moved into the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in my room. My sister lives in the kitchen. Well, that's why I have to move out of my house. Because my brother wants to move out. What? My brother wants to move out. He's leaving the room. To... How old is he that he still lives home? Ninety. Well, seriously, how old is he? He's older than me. <laughs> Holy cow. He was still living at home. So are you the most successful kid in the family? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm a big success. I'm the Michael. My brother's like Tito. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Je hey, Jeff, aren't you glad you called in to Chris? Tito, come uh, You having a good time now? I'm always glad I called in. <laughs> yeah. So why is your brother moving up? This is my brother, yeah, Zeppo Coro. Own life. What's his oh, own life? Oh, oh, good for him. Doing what? Do you want your own life? Sure. Well, get off the sauce and get a job. And help your mom out so she doesn't have to sell that house. Yeah, poor thing. She's up on a cinder block. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing I can do about it. <sighs> I hope it's double wide. I'm just sitting up front. It, is he, claims it's, he claims there's three bedrooms in that. Yeah, they do. They have three bedrooms. Yeah, you got two bathrooms. Yeah, dining room. I'm yeah. sitting up front with the guy driving my house. Hey, does, that, does that bathroom have like blue water? You know the the, the toilet, tiny bowl man. Yeah. I don't know. Like airplane toilet. I don't know. It's gonna be like. <laughs> they come, oh, look, they come toilet. Uh, fully furnished, also. They do. Yeah. Yeah, but all the furniture is built in. Yeah, but, don't, but like, well, don't you have to like unscrew a thing at the bottom so that you can take the duty and stuff out of that little? Let's take almost like I'm an airplane. Yeah, it's like no, a no, tank. They, no, they can they can hook it up into a cesspool. Like, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Once they put on like a, if they can put it on a permanent foundation, it's in the block. It's my job to empty the crapper. <laughs> then, they're, then they're allowed to uh, they're allowed to hook it up to a cesspool. <laughs> Yeah, I do, because I told you, my father had one years ago. We used to use it as a summer place. We didn't live there. <laughs> you, were, you had a summer home, you just drove to wherever you wanted the vacation or something? No, it's not. It's not. It's on It's Tinder permanent. Oh, no, it's permanent. It's yeah. 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 It was 75 feet long. <laughs> we should meet a lot of good people at that trailer community. Yeah. Imagine, like, living in a trailer community and Jeff comes in. You know that you've hit rock bottom. Yeah, it's like, it's, that's going to motivate a lot of people yeah. to get some work. yeah. People be living, <laughs> moving out of trouble. I just got a double wide. <laughs> I thought I was bad, but I'm not that bad. <laughs> hey, guys, can I get in on the domino game? <laughs> yeah, you might make a lot of friends, Jeff. You never know. I'll see you, Jeff. I got to go now. 
Okay, man, you take care of yourself. <laughs> All right, hey, Jeff, call us when you're in the new place. Huh? Yeah, okay, I would. All right, we're done with Ronnie, right? I mean, it's yeah. enough for me. Frank Geraldo's going to do the news with us. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, a very man. funny guy. Witty guy. Bring in Greg. Let him sit down. There he is, Greg Geraldo. Everyone knows who he is. His Greg new, be there, his new comedy you. album, Good Day to Cross a River. <laughs> Everyone always wants to know what that means, except me. What are you up to? Um, well, lots of different stuff. I got this, uh, this single, which, believe it or not, it was, it was like the most requested single in K-Rock for five weeks in a row. It's you ranting. Yeah, well, it's just like sort of a version of my stand-up that they just put, put to music. Like, put to music, and I had no idea that's oh, what was happening. Oh, I gotta happening. hear this. What is they it? They play it here all the time. They do? Yeah. What is it? Let's hear it. It's like a music track. Yeah, it's weird. These guys, like, they saw me doing stand-up. They, they, they used to be in that group Aqua that did... Uh, Barbie Girl, that, uh -huh. that little poppy, corny pop yeah. song years ago. You love that song, Howard. Uh, you know, probably... I'm a Barbie girl yeah. in a Barbie, Barbie world. world. <laughs> it's outrageous <laughs> and contagious. You know, they made millions and millions of dollars off that worldwide. Yeah. And, uh, so we had a mutual friend. They brought him to see me at a comedy club, and they said, oh, we really, they're Danish, you know, and they... They, they, they said, we really like your stuff. We want to just redo this. They made it seem like they were just doing this bizarre art project because they were just going to put bits and pieces and clips of things together. And to, they ended up using, like, I go to their hotel, they have a recording studio, and I just did, like, just talked for... Can you get you know, paid for that? Oh, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be happening, but you know how that's... you screaming work. about pot, right? Think yeah, pot should be legal. Pot. It was just a general stuff that I rant about, more or less. But you said screaming about how pot should be legal and that uh, isn't it amazing that they can take a pill and give 80-year-old guys erections and, uh, you know, that's not exactly legal. I mean, you know, it's, it's weird. So why can't pop be legal? And it's just a bunch of music going on behind it. <laughs> so can you get, like, publishing rights for writing a song? Like, can you, if every time it's played and stuff? I thought you were going to ask if I can get... <laughs> are you I getting get, money? I get for... a lot of... Yeah. Not, are you not, not a rock star. Are you making some money? You know what? They said originally it went from, man, this is going to make you millions of dollars, <laughs> to, like, this may help bring people out to the club. <laughs> <laughs> it went like the complete. Here's fifty dollars. I'm, I'm like the lead belly of the electronic music world. I signed away all my rights, thought nothing of uh, it. Is your career going okay? It's it's all right. Everything's good. Okay. Someone said you got bumped from Letterman again. Three times. Jesus. Yeah. Three, three times. What is the last time you got bumped from Letterman? The last one was about a month ago or so. Jane Pauley was the, the host, the guest. The guest. They kept, yeah, I've been bumped from people. I got bumped once when Rosie Perez was the only guest. She was the only guest, and she was literally on. Uh, promoting a, a documentary about Puerto Rico that she was gonna, she was producing for the Independent Film Channel, which would be out sometime in 2005. Yeah. That was all she was talking about, and they and they bumped you. So what's your gig like? You go on there and you do stand up. Do stand up, yeah. But each time he sat me down and we sort of talked for a couple seconds because so it was going to kill him. First time you get bumped for Jane Pauley. Like how, first, how does first that? Time, first time was Rosie Perez. Second time was uh, Tommy Franks, General Tommy Franks, and the last time was Jane Pauley. So how does it work? Like you get the call, and for a comedian. You're like, oh my god, this is great, Letterman. This is like a big break. And yeah. you fix up some good material. Yeah, yeah you gotta go out to the clubs. The sets. You know how they do the sets for these shows? It's gotta be tightened up. It's gonna oh, be reapproved. Is it the sets like lost set in stone for months before you even get on the show? And you do you tell your whole family and like you could because you know probably yeah. your family thinks, why did you go into comedy? Why didn't you get a normal job? <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's sad and. The, you it's know, sort of your validation. Yeah, and then you sit there and, uh, you know. So what happens? They, they call you up and they say, okay, we want you on, like, next Thursday or right. something. And you go, great. Yeah. At what point do they tell you you're not going to be on? Do they make you go all the way down to the studio? Uh, they make, you, I mean, they literally you're tell you. You're there. sitting You're like, you're like, the last time was crazy. I was literally in the wings and they're trying to give me the right mic. Do you want handheld? Do you want this? I go, well, am I going or not? Because I mean, it sounded like it was still a commercial break and right. then the, the stage manager says, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and you just, they're going to finish this, then you. I'm like, wait, I don't think that, I don't think this is right. And then she says, uh, she goes, go, go, go. And she pushes me out onto the stage and I'm walking toward the mic and I realize they're still in commercial. Davis in there with his producers. Right. And I said, what the hell's going on? And Letterman freaked. And what's going on? It was like a completely disorganized. And they off the show. No, they, but there was no time. And that they, I was never supposed to be sent out. I was supposed to be sent to just go sit with him to say goodbye, sorry. Uh, uh, and what do you wear when you go on these shows? I just wear like a little teddy. No, really? What do you wear? Sexy. You're supposed to, you like, you're, plan your outfit yeah, everything. That's, you, you know what, you do, right? you know what those kind of suck is that you, you, you go out, and now you got to go out and buy something else. You know, how long does it take to put together clothes that look presentable on television? So, I mean, I'm trying to create they, a they picture. They make you wear a suit. I don't know that they make you, per se, but, they, but you know, they strongly suggest you kind of dress up a little. So, you know, you get so you suit, go out and buy a new suit. Yeah, you're always your own spend the whole day off. So it costs you money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. And, in fact, you, 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 you usually have to cancel a road gig or something. Right, so, yeah, the whole right, thing costs you the whole thing. Besides, 
money. Beside the shame of your family, <laughs> is there a walk of shame like when you go back and then, I know what uh, I do pity, Letterman. The pity having that you get from everybody. You know, there, are, <laughs> there are people who stand around and watch the show and they work on their Letterman. You don't even know what right. they do. You walk out and they all go tell you how great you are and all this kind of thing. And uh, when you walk out, do they all go, oh. Yeah, it's like, oh, it'll be all right. And it's like, you feel like you're not a loser. It's like, this is, yeah. you know. And, uh, I actually did it. I got on the show once when Regis Philbin was hosting. Oh, yeah. So that's really a, a great. dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so wait a minute, do now. people look at you like you're a loser? Yeah, they, they, they try to, you know, it's not that whether they look at you like a, you know, they, they would think that any significant person wouldn't have been kept waiting right. for an hour and then bumped off the show. Right. Jane Paul, he wanted to talk about her psychosis for another five minutes. And like, you, yeah, right. And you realize half the bits suck and like, you know, what, why couldn't well, I go? The other thing that makes it even worse is that when they realize that there's not going to be enough time for a full stand-up set, right. they'll, they, but they still have some time, so then they put in like these these bits that they have in reserve that are terrible, little like 30 seconds. Oh, so, so now it looks like uh, you were bumped by that. Right. Like, Man, they, like they, crap. They, yeah, like was, but have you ever been sitting in the green room waiting to go on and then, and they come in and tell you then? Yeah, it's usually right around there. But they take you, you don't know until you're downstairs in the green room right, right outside, the, right, you know, not in yeah, your dressing room. Right? Yeah. You're ready. They don't know until the last second. Do you ever want to punch Dave in the face? No, he's actually, he was pretty cool both times. Like, the, for the first two times, he was very cool. And he actually helped promote a gig I was doing and everything. Right. The last one, he was in a real bad mood because, I, you know, it was so disorganized at the end. And he was sort of, he said something like, well, hey, you're, and I was, I couldn't shake being mad that time. So I'm right. sitting there and he said, and I didn't know that we were going to talk. I thought I was just going to sit there. He's going to wave goodbye. And he started talking to me on the air. Oh. And, uh, you know, you, you don't know, like, how you're supposed to be talking. You're supposed to wait to sit to be done. That's weird. You he know said, what? Uh, he said, uh, so when, when you're somewhere this weekend, and, and uh, I go, you know what? I don't even know. I don't even know where I am. You don't even I don't care. even know what date it is today. I don't even care. And he goes, well, 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 he says, well, way to sell tickets. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah, deep yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for my three-second spot. Yeah. Like, that's going to sell tickets. Yeah. Where are you going to be this weekend? Yeah, well, I thought, well, you know, I, I had Because you were so funny. <laughs> you, know, you know what's weird? Because, like, uh, I, I, I got a call from Robert, and I happened to be sort of thinking out loud on the air I was going well I think I want to appear on Letterman or some show like that so I can talk about this deal I signed and I really want to tell my audience you know what, what I'm doing because it's hard here to talk about because everyone gets upset so I'm speaking to Rob Burnett the, the guy who runs the show or something and uh, he says we want you on the show I said okay I'll do the show because we want you on Monday I, I can't do Monday I said uh, how about Thursday he goes well we got a bunch of people booked but I'll move them I'll get rid of them. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> I said, uh, okay. Oh, no, so a bunch of people got it because of you. Yeah, actually, like yeah. actually well, Greg was on Thursday. Yeah, yeah right. My, uh, <laughs> well, you come on with me. I don't well, those, those are fine. If they bump you without showing up, that's great. I mean, okay. that, that does happen a lot. At I got to tell you, you know, it makes you feel good about yourself. I mean, uh, with your situation. Love, yeah, to bump people. It was yeah. my situation, you know. You know, your, situation, Greg, your Greg. situation is better than mine. Greg's is horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta, you, you, it's, Greg, better, it's better for you, definitely. Yeah. So you're saying, Howard, you feel the direct opposite of how Greg felt? Yes, right. I did. I felt, so I felt, saying, I felt, kicking I, me in the, kicking me in the has, crotch when I'm down is like a good no idea. He has no worries. When he goes over to the Letterman Studios, he knows he's getting on. Yeah. yeah, oh, he knows. He knows full well. When he wakes Listen, up that morning, I had a team. lot of years. I had a lot of years of being humiliated like Greg. <laughs> trust me. You know, I mean, it was really bad the first 15 years of my career. I mean, awful. So don't, don't feel that I got off scot free. No, he no, paid no. his dues. I, I paid my dues. He trust me. He spilled some blood. I got to take a break. When we come back, Robin's going to do the news. Greg's going to be here. We'll we'll sit here. We'll we'll talk. We'll we'll cry. We'll commit. It's a little bit. Well, kibitz. Kibitz, I'm sorry. Yeah, what is this kibitz? I'm sorry, he's hawking me in China. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> well, we're sitting here with Greg Giraldo. Mm -hmm. You were kidding during the commercial, right, about the crystal meth? Uh... No. Oh, you weren't? Well, I mean, I didn't know you well, did it's that. hard. You know, you, you try to come up with stories for the show because you always want to be a little on the edge. But I have, you know, kids and I'm married, so I have no, I don't really have any good stories. Right. So I, I thought, but I, I, so I could just tell you, like, stories about, like, Snorting coke with a hooker in Reno. Which you're making up. No, it's, it's a true story. But I was with uh, a comic friend of mine who has his, he has his own uh, has his own show. Right. I, I can't believe you don't want to say it's the Drew Carey show. No. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's right. not him, but it's another guy. But we, we had a lot of time to kill. We were at the airport for like six hours. So like, why don't we go to one of these like whorehouse things just to see it purely as a tourist attraction thing? Right. Because I really, you know, I, I wasn't going to screw around. I'm, you know, married and, and uh, the hookers weren't that hot. But but, uh, but uh, it turns out they, one of them had like, lowered or something, ended up just 
a blow? Yeah. He's a blow. Yeah. And you end up, uh, <laughs> and, and of course, the person I was with is very AA and everything, and now I'm like sitting on a flight for eight hours trying to pretend that none of that happened. Pete <laughs> <laughs> Rose was sitting right behind me. Is that Richie right? Haven sitting next to me. I'm crawling off the walls of the airplane. And what about the crystal meth? Well, that's a whole other... I, I, oh, we I, don't want to talk about that? I, I suspect, a whole other hooker, I suspect sorry, that what? I, I changed it to blow because I thought crystal meth sounded too harsh. Oh. Well, in this story, the hookers were hot, Howard, so it's different. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you were a drug guy. No, I'm not really, generally speaking, at all, but it's just... Just I've never recently. done crystal meth. What is that? That sounds like... The, the, you know what? It's, it's the worst. Speed, uh, right? it's, it's like you, you, you do what seems like a little bit, and you don't sleep for like three days. You don't eat or sleep. Like, yeah, yeah, it's the worst. I, I, I did speed in college and stuff, and I hated it. And then I would do acid, and it would be laced with speed, and I would be all upset. Yeah. Because you couldn't get to sleep. Yeah, that's... And that's, you wonder who's looking for that experience. Yeah, you should say, why am I doing this? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing pleasurable. Even while you're doing it, at least like with coke... You know, you have that moment. Of, wow, this is actually fun. But like Christmas, even while you're doing it, you think this is this is ridiculous. Where yeah, can explain we get that more? lie to me. Like, <laughs> where can we get, where can more? We get more? Right. But and, I don't understand crystal meth. Like you get up, you get you get you are awake. Right. But there's nothing fun about it. Well, there's sort of. I mean, just you know, you get sort of energetic. You feel it. But different people respond differently. And also, if you really want your marriage to end, it does that really right, well. Right. You get that going. It makes you energetic. Yeah. It makes you. A good, it makes you a good parent. You know, yeah. the kids, it takes a lot of energy to keep the kids moving. It is. I've never done it, but I've known people who do it, and they all seem like fun people. You know, yeah, they're all like, yeah, when you hang out with them, you hang out with them, it's fun. I thought that was like a fun. highly addictive substance, and I'm like, well, why would you get addicted to that? You you see, get a, I'm heroin, I understand, at least not. Right, you go to sleep. You seem to lose your teeth pretty quick, quickly with crystal meth versus almost anything. What, you grind them down? I guess. It seems yeah. like people that are really into crystal meth seem to have a, not a lot of teeth. But do, when you do something like crystal meth, do you ever say, gee, I've got kids, I've got a wife. Oh, it's the worst. Does it go through your head like... Oh, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's all over. And today's, right. uh, today's 12 days, 12 hours without a drink or drug in my body, and that's it. I'm going right to a meeting after this. Right, what do you do uh, when the kids say, Dad, what do you think of drugs? Yeah, it's all you can't help but be hypocritical. Although, then again, it's like, what else? What else? I mean, what are you going to do about anything we've ever done? When the kids sit down with you one day and go, Dad, have you ever tried crystal meth? And yeah. What are you going to say, no? I don't know. I, it's really something i got to come to grips with right. pretty soon. But, right. you know, it's, it's like, it's a, you know, it's like I <laughs> Get back this, to us when you do. This split life. You know, you're on the road. It's like, you're, you're, you know, you're Mr., you know, leave it to Beaver in the city, and then you go on the road, and by the third day on the road, you're like, you're, you're like a crazed pirate. Right. Now, you know, if your kid says to you, have you ever tried crystal meth, you just say, have you ever tried shutting up? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Dad, you ever done blow with a whore? Yeah. No. No. Get back to school. I think, I think the, the important thing I think is if you to to do have your kid's first experience doing blow with a whore to be with you. Right. This way, yeah. it's like, there are you guys who yeah, do that. With yeah, it's kid. a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more organic, and you show that you have an open relationship. <laughs> Let's do some news. Come on. That's what, when you can say to your kid, you can tell me anything. <laughs> and never give a hooker money for coke. They do not come back with You're coke. You're kidding, are They you? don't come back with coke. <laughs> How do you know that? That's not true. <laughs> My friend, uh, uh, Tony, it happened to him. All right. Dear John. Dude, right now, I'm just doing some, you guys are talking about blow, and you were telling me, you know, why people do it and shit. Oh, oh dude. No, I'm sorry, man. I used the X word. Oh. I'm all wired up, that's why, man. I just wanted to tell you right now. I had some leftover from last night, so I woke up this morning, and, you know, I grabbed down a couple of lines of them on the table, you know, and put it up my nose, and it's just like, you can't stop. All you keep doing is looking for more. Oh, so you know? you're doing coke right now, and you find that you're addicted? Nah, not really. Not really. I can go for a couple of days without it. Yeah, because wow, you don't have it. a couple of days without it. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. It is sort of instantly I mean, addictive. And then I found the guy that's really cheap, like, you know, $125 for like an eight ball. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you're all set. Yeah. It, you know, you got the whole thing. It's like a whole little, like, ritual. And then you sit there. And then a lot of times, man, I call people and nobody has any idea. They're like, oh, wow, it's a great idea. You sound like a, you know, you sound like a smart, intelligent guy. A matter of fact, I think I just lost a job over it. A matter, well, a matter of fact. Well, that wasn't a that. matter of fact, you do sound smart and intelligent. Who's <laughs> <laughs> okay, calling? I want to know. Oh, thanks, man. All right, I gotta go. <laughs> Have a party. All right, thanks, dude. <laughs> don't blow by myself. Yeah, I'm gonna party like a, I'm gonna party like a MFA, man. Take care. Thanks, guys. He really is happy sitting there alone in his apartment doing lines of coke in the morning. It's that's working uh, for him. That's it's the most impressing thing uh, is doing it by yourself. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's when you know you have a problem, right, Artie? Yeah, that's yeah. brutal in the morning. It's brutal. First thing. What uh, is in the news? A 
shark devoured a woman off the uh, coast of South Africa. God, that's the worst thing. Seventy-seven-year-old woman has been swimming, you know, like this, like a daily thing for seven years. I'm gonna go out for my daily constitutional. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And they said she probably was taken, uh, you know, off guard because her favorite stroke is the backstroke. Right. So she probably didn't even see it coming. And the only thing that was left of her was a red baby. <laughs> I wonder how that works. Like, I thought, first of all, I thought sharks don't come that close to shore. They said it probably was following some fish, and oh. uh, you know, because it saw the school of fish, and it was like, oh, there's dinner, and started. Where was this? Well, Australia? South Africa. South Africa. Yes. Yeah. Old, old, old women do smell really fishy yeah, that's true and you know what it's gotta it's gotta be weird like she's doing the backstroke and then like all of a sudden you're doing it and then like all of a sudden you look down and your legs are gone oh, and you're like oh my god and then all of a sudden like at what point do you know you're dead <laughs> well they said first you know it grabbed her and and took a good chunk and she was just floating there and you know blood was all over the place and then it came back and it was like jaws the mouth opened up and she was gone that's the way to go you're supposed to punch the shark in the nose, isn't that what they tell you? Yeah, that's so not the way to go, though. I mean, to be food. And yeah. what a demeaning thing to be food. I'm just saying, no, if you already got your legs bitten off, you want the shark to yeah, finish you off. take the rest of you know, I mean, Just do it hey, You bit my balls off. Right, just take me. Eat my head. <laughs> Thanks, you left my penis. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. I got no balls. Thanks for leaving my red bathing cap. Thanks for leaving me balls. I'm so, leaving balls. I'm so done with the ocean, man. So yeah, I don't think I can. I am so done with it. I'll look at it and I'll walk alongside it, but I am not going in. That long love affair you've had with the ocean is over. Yeah, it's over. You know what? I love the pool. Yeah. That's what I say. There's no reason. No you know, shark. They always say, after somebody, you know, gets eaten like this, well, yeah, but the sharks usually don't come in. Well, that's why it seems like while you're being eaten by the shark, it, you know the probability, and you got to be thinking as you're dying how much God hates you. <laughs> yeah. My mom, yeah, like, this God, is a this terrible is... way to go. My mom used to say to me, the salt water is so good, Ow! it heals the body if you're itchy or your skin it's so terrific for your right. constitution i go in and i visited israel and Hello. i went in the <laughs> dead sea and you float it's impossible to drown <laughs> the salt gets into your system it's terrific i love it i go yeah you love it because you haven't been eaten by a shark right that's why you love it. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? ODB had seven children. <laughs> According to his manager, he was paying child support to seven kids. Right, please. And he had three with his wife and four with other women, four other women. And he signed the birth certificates to prove that he was the father. And so each will be represented equally in his estate when they divvy up things. Yeah, rest in peace, ODB. Robin, what you're forgetting is ODB had seven kids. Dirt Dog had six kids. Oh, I see. That's how it went. Yeah. Dirt <laughs> well, dog. Dirt Dog doesn't have an estate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Right. You know what I noticed? Uh, that rappers, they, they almost never use the word perhaps in their songs. No. Because <laughs> the law gets yeah, Perhaps you want to back that ass up. Perhaps. <laughs> They're very definite. They set bad examples for the kids. You think? I think so. Rap stars? <laughs> Why, why you know one example of a rap star. You know what I love about the rap, even the whole voter die puff daddy thing, that the rappers are coming out in favor of the Democratic Party because, of course, the Republicans are pro-gun, you know, right. and uh, misogynistic and materialistic, all those values that the, <laughs> that the rap community. Uh, yeah, it's a little strange. Yeah. But you would think the rappers, rappers are the most Republican of anybody. That's true. <laughs> okay, a good point there. Yeah, Somebody ought to point that out. She's never looked at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Professional comedian. You say this the Vibe Awards are supposed to be on TV tonight, but I don't think they're gonna show you the big fight. They broke out into a fight and some guy got stabbed yeah. at the, at the uh, you know, rap awards. Me, apparently it was uh, Dr. Dre, who, you know, is yes. you know, one of the big producers in rap, was getting a lifetime achievement award. Uh -oh. And as he was approaching the stage, I guess, to get his lifetime achievement award, somebody jumped up and punched him in the face. Nice. <laughs> so that just erupted in a huge melee, and somebody wound up getting stabbed, and uh, they had to bring in additional police from outside of wherever they were staging this to uh, help quell the violence after all the fight. That's a racist stereotype. What? <laughs>
Thank you, Craig. Thank you for setting it straight. If I was somewhere and a 35-year-old man got a Lifetime Achievement Award, I'd punch somebody. <laughs> that would make me mad. You know, on the, uh, that, this, this pilot I did for Comedy Central, we had a joke where, about uh, the Chris Rock hosting the Academy Awards. The Chris Rock's going to be the host of the new Academy Awards, and in keeping with the more urban theme, they're going to rename the show the Oxers. <laughs> <laughs> Oxers. Oxers. Except is ox. Oxer. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. <laughs> you write those jokes. <laughs> Gotta write some jokes. David Lee Roth in the paper today with his new gig. I always thought this was a, a joke that he was studying to be a paramedic, right. but it's true. He's been on over 200 runs, and the other day he, you know, saved some woman's life by, uh, you know, shocking her heart back into uh, working order. He shocked her. Shock to the heart. Well, you know what? If I had a bad accident and David Lee Roth showed up, that would be shock enough for me. Hey, <laughs> I'm Diamond Dave. But they say that he's dyed his hair. You know, he doesn't have the blonde hair and he's very low key. He says in the 200 runs, he has never been recognized, which is great for him. He was even reluctant to talk to the Post about what he's doing. He's so serious about it. He shares a terrace with a friend of mine downtown. He lives, like, right above them. They share this terrace. He's completely nuts. Anyways, he's, a, he's taking <laughs> helicopter flying lessons. Yeah. Like, fly helicopters. He's taking the... He's empty. doing a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Might as well shock. Shock. <laughs> Ow. Ow. He's enjoying his money. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting at the comedy cellar one time with uh, David Lee Roth sat down and Jerry Seinfeld or the, and you, obviously you know David Lee Roth how he makes no sense he just babbles on or crazy right, right. crazy stuff and talk about a guy that has no tolerance or something like that so David Lee Roth sits down he tells one of his stories about you know it's like a boat it's got to reach the ocean and if it doesn't it's like the world's collapsing man uh, Seinfeld just stood up and walked away <laughs> <laughs> didn't acknowledge it didn't had enough man that's it this is not going to be look at, look at this fool <laughs> I'm not going down this road I don't road. have time for this <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe one day Jerry Seinfeld will need some sort of emergency medical help. <laughs> David Lee Roth will walk away. There you go. Sorry, my man. I'm leaving. <laughs> or maybe he'll finish that story before he, wants, before he does the uh, shocking. And that's what. Thank happening. you so much, Robin, and thank you, Greg Geraldo. You thank always you, delight us, and we didn't bump you, if you know. Oh, that was very nice. engineer uh, having to leave during the show yesterday because of illness uh, some people are suspecting he was not ill <laughs> it was due to his fight with baba Bowie. Yeah, i think it was delabate flu delabate flu yes. there you so, go it's sweeping that rare strain <laughs> we're hoping to get a a uh, an exclusive with scott the engineer later in the program find out exactly what went down and howard stern exclusive right now he's considered the hottest guest to get <laughs> scott the engineer uh, that's right I, we hope we get him first that's right oh, scott the engineer it looks fine there he is you'd be recovered from back. his illness it's amazing you know, your move every time the way you want you get in a fight is to go i'm leaving like you're like a i woman. don't need this yeah. What's like a woman. That? No, seriously. I gotta see somebody about that. No, really. I mean, like you leave, like you storm out, like uh, like a woman. You know, you know what it is? My whole life, believe it or not, no one's gonna believe this. I was, I t totally tried to avoid confrontation. Right. <laughs> I, I know you. I, I'm telling you. I, it's un until I started working on this show. Um, what, what happened yesterday? Well, we had a little disagreement. What was it about? And then I. I got ill. I guess I gave Artie what I had. Right. Well, you... you. <laughs> what was the disagreement? I was working, and all of a sudden, he comes running into the studio I was in. It wasn't even my studio. And he goes, I've been trying to call. I go, yeah, the phone, something wrong with the phone. He goes, why didn't you fix the phone? <laughs> I go, like, I'm busy working on stuff I'm fixing to get the show on the air. The phone was the least of my concern, and the, his first mistake was, I'm not a phone man. So he, he assumed I was a phone guy. Well, I have exciting news for you. You and Baba Buhai have been having these fights for too long. We haven't had one in a long time. All right. I mean, I've been pretty calm myself. But I know that there's something festering. Really? And uh, I have called in relationship expert Pat Croce. Really? Who says he can patch up anyone's relationship if really? given the proper time with them. Oh. And today on the show, 
The odd I'm couple. Have an intervention? I'm gonna have an intervention between Scott the engineer and Baba Booey. Okay. And we'll get this worked out. I just think he was, you know, came Baba down Booey. on me for Baba Booey. I mean he just came storming in like, you know, what the hell are you doing? You you sitting here not doing anything and that's really what did he actually say that, or is that what you? Well, that was his interpretation. He called me a lazy f. Oh. That's that's uh, one of the ones. Yes. Better get that one on tape. I think we do. You said you lazy f. <laughs> now this set you into rocket mode. It did. Uh, <laughs> I guess you were screaming at who from E. Richie from E. No, I wasn't really screaming at E. Oh yes, you were. Oh, at Richie. I, I just I, said Richie, please don't use the tape because it's totally out of context. I told you not to use the goddamn tape. That was not the tone. But please don't. Why are you tape. robbing us of great tape? Richie, That's where is this tape? Why? Well, it's not mine. So JD's playing now. He attacked me and like ten times in a row. He was like, don't play the tape. You're not getting permission to air anything. <laughs> and, and I told him. I, was I told like, you. It was I told totally you. I said, Scott, just, shut up. You're repeating yourself. I heard you the first you time. Didn't you didn't have just the whole. Going. You didn't have the whole thing, so it was totally out of context. And you were going crazy, going, I'm not giving permission to air any of this today. I don't think I said that. I have that on tape. No, no, no. I have that on tape. I, First of all, I don't have to give permission. You can use it whenever you That's want. That's right. It's in. But, but but even still, I always I always like you to be comfortable with it. But uh, I will play it because your head is going to explode. It will. I, that's that's why example. I wasn't feeling well. When you I had total anxiety. When you have a fight with someone, you get complete. You go crazy. You know what? My wife says I hold it in for like right. two months, and then all of a sudden, boom, everything comes it, out. It all comes out. You know, I'm calm. I'm calm, and like then like an boom. explosion. Do you yeah. think this is a result of your home life, and you want to yell there, but no. you can't? No, I can yell at home. You like to yell here more than you do at home? I don't like. I don't like to yell, but it's some. It just. I don't like, and that's why it all bubbles over. Have it's you and Have you and Baba Booey uh, seen each other today? Have I you, saw him, but we haven't. You haven't spoken. You haven't spoken. Yeah. Right, it's time to get this relationship on track. Howard, the only reason why I haven't spoken to Scott, because I would have, is because I spoke to the relationship expert yesterday, and he's going to talk to Scott when he comes in, and he feels that it's better that he sort of moderate this whole thing. All right. By the way, I've seen him speak. He's a great speaker. Pat Croce, yeah. He's an awesome speaker. Well, this is going to be very dynamic. Scott, yeah. the engineer. Are you willing to sort of work through this relationship with Baba Booey? Of course. We have to work together. So, I mean, yeah. because I want to hear this tape of you exploding. Yes. <laughs> because I... I pretty, told pretty, me not to use the goddamn tape. This is not even it. No, no, not... Actually, it's I'm worse sorry than that one. <laughs> bringing in an expert <laughs> because these tapes are so much fun. <laughs> and if they go away, I don't know what I'll do. Trust me. Expert <laughs> Expert. Yeah, These two will be at each other's throats in a month. <laughs> you ain't gonna see anything work out. I just felt he was overly aggressive on on me for you know no reason. Well, you're gonna get to air all of your grievances. I have brought in the top specialist. Oh, good. I appreciate that. I, you know, so I spoke to this guy Pat Kirchy yesterday for about 20 minutes. Right. And then he's gonna talk to Scott when he comes in. And uh, he was really good. You know, I said some things, and he's like, "Listen, let's not BS. You know what you meant." You know, like he doesn't let you off the hook. Right. You gotta, air, right. you gotta air your dirty laundry and then get it off your chest, uh, and then he can work with you. I'm sort of looking forward to it in a way because I'm gonna say what I have to say. Scott's gonna say what he has to say, and he's gonna. I even notice as you're speaking to me, you can't even look right, at Scott. Right. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying to like, right. save it all for the air. Okay. okay. All right. All right. No, Scott's not looking at him either. <laughs> Why would I want to look at those teeth? <laughs> it got very ugly. I know Tom was rattled. He, he had... didn't even want to go in and break it up. No, I, you know what? I wasn't rattled. I just really decided I was going to let that one go. Right. I, I, I'm telling you, I've never heard... Was it so loud that you were upstairs, literally, and could hear the yelling? I was in the I was in the edit room. He was yes. behind closed doors. Behind, behind <laughs> the, that <laughs> airlock door. And, and, it, went and it, was like they, it was like Scott was standing next to me. <laughs> I, found, I went in there. I found them cowering behind a I wasn't, I, believe me, I wasn't cowering. Yeah. All right, here is Sal to say something. Wait, wait, let me finish. So, and then Scott, after they had the argument, I'm sitting there just, you know what? These, I, these two guys, they got to figure it out. Right. All of a sudden, the door flies open. Scott says, I don't have to take his effing BS, and I'm done with it, and the door closes. <laughs> You are so gay. Uh, I'm gay. You're gay. How, how does that gay? You just like you run out the door. You 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 are you, 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 going home sick when you're yeah, sick. That that's like uh, well, really, Scarlett O'Hara. No, really, I couldn't he suddenly, continue. He got the vapors and he had to go home. You could continue. <laughs> no, Baba Booey continued. You could continue too. I I worked myself up. Every Please Columbus tell me. Day. Every Columbus Day, you try to get yourself out of here. Right, because of the damn parade. I left early. Right, yeah. exactly. But please tell me when you were in your car, you calmed down and realized how silly it was for you to be leaving. 
So he wanted to get out of here because of the Columbus Day right, Parade. Right, right. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and he used this opportunity. It was a ruse, a smoke screen. Yes, Al. Right. I think Pat Croce should take a bat and smash it right in Baba Bowie's mouth. That's how he can settle this tonight. What? Why? Why are you saying that? with him? He's like Baba Bowie? He's, he's very irritable. I don't, I'm don't. i on Scott's side completely with this. Wow. He's demeaning. He's disgusting. I've never been more angry at this. And you've only been here a week. <laughs> wow. I swear to God, I'm ready to hey, level him right in the hallway. Can I jump in? Yeah. I walk, I walk into the office this morning. Somebody's got to be in charge around here. Right. You're in charge. I walk in the office and... He's standing in the office. He walks in and rips a five-second form. Oh, dude. So I go, Sal, what are you doing? And he goes, what do you mean? And I go, don't do that in here. Right. And he goes, really? And I go, no, really. And he goes, why not? I go, because this is an office where people work. You can't fart in the office. You go in the bathroom, dude. Yeah, but everybody I agree. Old. I just know everybody does. Dude, dude. how old are you? I'm 35, but yeah, Gary's dude. playing it off like it's such a big deal. It, it is, is a big deal. We're a bunch of men. From I don't want it still. There's not a bunch of men in there. And you know what? I'm a guy. I don't want to smell your stink. I wouldn't do it in here. I do where Gary is. No, oh, come on, Sal. Yeah. Get a grip on oh, yourself. Okay, all right. You work here. Did, did, did you do that at the, uh, uh, your office at the stock exchange? All the time. No, you didn't. But listen, hold on. Granted, okay, I have... Which, be, he's not there anymore? I'll be the no. better guy and apologize to Gary for farting. But still, he doesn't have to yell at me across the hall. Yes, he does. I didn't yell at I'm not 11 years old. Dude, no one wants to be in a room with your stink. Go in the bathroom. You know, I was talking to Scott. I think Gary was out of line. No, I was talking to Scott DePace. Scott, De Scott DePace even said, in the E room, which is a bunch of guys, a tiny room, there's a no fart rule. Like, yeah. Because it's too small. It's too small. And it like, wants to get sick from your smell. And, and I got to tell you, you know, when John was here, that was John's thing. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I would always say to John, don't, don't do that. And he goes, oh, I can't open it. What do you want? I can't open it. They can't help it. But it, it would be disgusting. Dude, I'm laying in bed with my girlfriend last night. I, I got to rip one so bad. I get up. And she even said, stay in the bed. Give me a Dutch oven. I don't care. I said, you're crazy. You can't handle it. You're the perfect woman. I said, you can't handle a Dutch oven. No, because then she, after I do it, she's like, oh. It's growing up in the bed. <laughs> so I stood. We were watching um, uh, Joan of Arcadia on tape. Oh, wow. And I went right in the hallway. <laughs> and I blasted off. And I stood there for you're like five to minutes. Do it in the bed. Damn right. I don't want to. I don't want to screw things up here. I let it, because it's gross. Chicks start looking at you differently. So I let it, I let it fester out there, and I knew it was fun, and I walk in, and I still dragged it in with me. Oh, it stayed with you? She goes, it still stinks in here. Hey, can I ask, can I ask uh, Sal a quick question? Would you walk into Tom's office and rip one? Yeah, Absolutely, would. I would love to. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I, I would all day long. And so if I wouldn't brush my teeth for a month and breathe right down Tom's nostrils. Oh, he's, he's, oh, he's, he's what did Google Tom do to you? You just try to, you know, get out of here. Get out. He's not. Well, I'm on your side, Sal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> There's the guy you really want to team up with. <laughs> but, and believe me, ten minutes from now, Scott and Sal will be screaming at each other. Yeah, right. It, it, right, it, it, I got to I got to take a break. It was just weird that he go when I said don't do that. He goes, come on. All right, relationship expert Pat Croce. Apparently, there's a lot of relationships around here that he knows. Yeah, the, he's going to be here, and, and Chrissy Brinkley is going to be here, and uh, it's very exciting. You know that night. Uh, we didn't even talk to Sal about not making it into work yesterday. Sal right. decided his own yeah. holiday. Yeah, the guy that didn't make it into work yesterday, he's going to yell at his boss. Yeah, he thought it was he thought it was Columbus Day and we should just have off. <laughs> and that was the incompetence of Baba Bowie. Oh, 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 Mr. Responsibility, oh, 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 take some responsibility now, Gary. Go ahead, Sal. Sal. How many people were me? 40, right? How many people came in yesterday? You it's your responsibility 39. to Everybody ask, do we have tomorrow that. off? <laughs> Where were you for Yom Kippur, Mr. Stern? You got the day off. Columbus Day South. Day. South. Uh, you're so, you're so not being funny. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Leave. Okay. And I'll leave you with Scott the Engineer's breakdown. At, the, at what point is this, Scott? I have no idea. I didn't hear it. Right. Why are you getting out of my case, man? And you don't know that there's issues. They're going to follow. I took care of it. I was working on issues. What do you think I was fucking doing? Turn it on? Fucking go fuck oh, yourself. You must yeah. be crazy, man. I'm sitting here trying to fuck the work and you get dumped down my throat. Okay, some help might be on its way. Wow. I didn't realize he was in charge of hiring for uh I'm not! That's the whole point. Well, you made it sound like it. No. You know that's a sensitive area. No, and we're gonna talk about again, Mr. Coach and I discuss this. He's he's got a Really good point. He painted me into a corner. I admitted stuff, and we're gonna talk about it. All right, you you, you pulled out a deadly weapon. Oh, Absolutely, that right. was a dagger that oh, you should please. not have played. Yes, and we'll talk about all that. Easy. I mean to say, hey, you're gonna be looking for work in a year. 
And I'm sure Tom will keep Scott around. <laughs> yeah, we get along so well. Yeah. <laughs> I got to admit, Scott's been working his ass off lately. He's a good worker. I always yeah, work here. my ass. I, you know, I do anything for the show. I'm, it's all right, well, yeah. all right. You don't have to sell me. I love you. Man. I know that. <laughs> right, gonna, so that's going to be something to look forward that's to. Gonna be all right. Okay. I'm Pat Croce. I'm the host of the nationally syndicated show Pat Croce Moving In, and I come to the Howard Stern Show because Gary, Bubba Booey has invited me in because there's a conflict in this studio, on this crew, between Scott the Engineer and Gary. They're at war, they're at odds, and we got to get these teammates back together. And how are you going to do that? We're going to do this because by interviewing both members separately, Gary and Scott, and then we'll get them together and we'll purge deep down into their souls and make sure we get exactly what's going on with this problem. We'll find out why they're doing what they're doing and let's see if they really want resolution. Do you know the history between these two guys? I just know a little history. Gary has talked to me yesterday in his pre-interview, but I'm interested in talking to Scott because I'm not here to make assumptions. I'm here to make an assessment and help them help themselves. All right, let's see what's gonna happen. Let's go, bring it on. Pat Croce is gonna come in here. Let me let me set up what's going on. Yesterday, Baba Bowie and Scott the Engineer got into one of their heated battles. This has been going on for years. Let me play you some tape of what happened. Here is Scott the Engineer yelling yesterday. This is Scott and Gary in the halls. Scott got so pissed he went home early, he left work. He didn't work anymore. Why are you getting out of my face, man? You don't know that there's issues that are going to come. I took care of it. I was working on issues. What do you think I was fucking doing? This is dirty on? Fuck, go fuck yourself. You must be crazy, man. I'm sitting here trying to fucking work and you get dumped down my throat. Fine, I'm working here, asshole. Because I certainly don't like it. Well, I mean, now, just for you, you motherfucker. Scott, that hurt when Gary said good luck finding work in a year, didn't it? Sure. Yeah. You know. All right, let's go to another argument. This is Scott the Engineer after that argument yelling at Richie from E because he didn't want Richie using the tape. Yeah. Don't play it on the don't air. Don't, don't play it on the air. What? You missed the beginning, and it's totally not the time. I heard you. Fine, fine. All right? This is a good time. Don't get on my case. We can go to the this apartment. We can storm it in here. Don't get on the other people. Don't get on the other people. And after that, Scott went to Tom and said, I have to leave. Yes. And this has been going on for years. For example, Scott's one of those guys, like, I'll go in there running, and I'll go, I got to get this piece of tape. I got to pull this thing off the phone right now. So Scott's got, you know, we don't have tape anymore. It's on the computer. Right. The computer needs to be set up to record. Right. Never does Scott, while I'm getting oh, my message, that's not true never does he turn to the left and get it that's set up. I pull it off together, and then I go, this is what I want. And Scott goes, OK. And then he turns to the left, and right, he starts. Right, right. But it's always a slow move. a lot of the time. Like, when I, when no, you see me, but Susan, when you see me come in, you should go, and I say, I got to pull this. You should go no, right do, to it. I do that. If it's not if it's not already set up, I, I, I end up waiting a lot. Well, that's just a pet peeve to go through a door to my picture. <laughs> no, I did that already. Does he do that? He's very angry with me. All right, and then even off the air. Scott, Lewis was hired here to do it. Wait a second. Listen to me. Listen to me. Lewis was hired to do transfer of stuff in there, which he is not doing, which Howard is up my ass worrying about, because he's constantly working up that stuff for you. You don't want to know about that. I don't want to know, because it's your job to know, and I don't have to know. How did you get it done before I had it done? In other words, I didn't always have to know. You tried my ass. Right, right, right. I got you, so then you work. I know what it is. Let me finish. No, let me finish. It's the same song. Go to Richie and tell him. In other words, if you can't get it done because you're overworked, I don't want to hear it. If you can't get it done because you're overworked, go to Richie and tell him. If you don't respect what I have to say, fuck you. You can't do, you couldn't get your fucking job done if you had to pin it on it. Gary, you can take it and shove it up your fucking ass. This has been going on forever. We now have Pat Croce, who is from a TV show called Moving In on weekdays at, I don't know, it's on all the different channels. He's syndicated. Or is it Moving On? Moving In. Moving In. That's what it says, <laughs> Moving In. Pat Croce is a relationship expert. Everything, is evidently the guy's terrific. There he is. That's the guy. Hi, Howard. Hey, oh, Pat. I've seen him before. Is this guy supposed to be the best? Hi, Robin. Pat, how are you a relationship expert before we get started? I have no story? idea. All right, how did you, how did, what are your credentials, really? I am a physical therapist by trade, an athletic trainer, 
You know me because I took the Sixers from worst to first in 96 to 2001. So probably mediating between Larry Brown and Allen Iverson made me an expert. I'm more like a life coach. Right, don't bang on that podium because we have the worst equipment here. And every time you bang on it, it makes tons There's of noise. There's nothing muffling anything. Right, so I'm going to yell at Scott about that yeah. for a minute. But, but so is there hope for Baba Booey and Scott the Engineer? Yes. All right. Yes. You've spoken to both of them off the air. That's correct. Hi, do you want to handle this and I'll shut up? No, both of us. Okay. Both of us, because you're involved here. The show is called Moving In. Pat Croce moving in. Oh, Pat I move Croce into a different in. home in a different town every day. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Are you like a Dr. Phil? Uh, he's a psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm not. I'm more like the best friend who tries to give you. Really, what I try to do is focus on where are these two guys right now and what are they willing to do to get to where they want to be tomorrow. And I kind of act like a performance coach. Are you like a motivational speaker? That's right. Okay. All right, tell me how we handle this. You're the guy. What has he found out so far? Yeah. Robin, first of all, these two, I asked both of them, what is the problem in one sentence? Uh -huh. What is the problem? And the problems that you just heard on the air are just fluffernutter. It goes way back. Scott does not respect Gary. Okay. Gary does respect you, Scott. Okay. Is that a surprise? Yeah. Why do you not respect Gary? I gotta tell you, I'm surprised that Scott doesn't respect him. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you respect Gary? Let's have it all come out. That's now. what's gotta come out now. If this is to heal, it's gotta Honesty, come out. Now. right? That's it. Scott, why don't you respect Gary? Probably please? because I feel that I um, work harder than he does, from what, from my perspective. And um, don't beg on your own crappy equipment. <laughs> yeah. It, it probably goes down to money too, and he gets paid. Probably a lot more than but, I get. But paid why should that? Why should that make? Well, I mean, why don't you? Why don't resentful. you? Resentful. But why don't you resent Fred or Artie or Howard or Robin? Why don't you resent? I, I can't see your talent outward. I can see their talent. They're on the air. See that? Time. That hurts. <laughs> well, I'm just. So how does that feel, Gary? Tell them how that feel, it, feels. It, it hurts because I don't think that you're so talented. I think that you're very good at what you do. I think you do it very badly in the sense that you, what, what, the, the end result is good. You're a good engineer. You know the show really well. But you're a pain in the ass to work with. You're, yeah. you're sort of slow, and you com you bitterly complain every step of the way. See, I wouldn't consider myself slow. Gary, you said to me a... in private that these new guys, guys like Sal, guys like uh, Richard Christie, move much faster than Scott, and, and they, and they happily, show how slow he is. And happily. And happily, and they're happy to do it. You feel he has a bad attitude, don't you? Yeah, I think his work is good. I'll tell you, Scott, I was saying to Pat in there, nobody knows the show better than Scott when it comes to engineering it and editing stuff. I'll go in there with something, and I'll say to Scott, do that, that, and that, and he goes, I got it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the middle of a sentence, he goes, I know. And I, we look at each other, we know from working together. But if, if Scott's working on something, whatever it is, and, and you understand, we're doing a live show here, so it's very difficult to prioritize because what was a priority 30 seconds ago is now at the window. So Scott, I'll give something to Scott to do, and when I walk in, I go, I need this. His arms immediately go up in the air, and he goes, ugh, you know, what do you want? Okay, okay. Is, that, is that true, Scott? That is true, and I'll tell you why. Why do you do that? Okay, because if, if I'm in the middle of working on something you just asked me to do, it's very hard to stop Things don't, the bang creative, the, don't bang on the, the creative, creative process and, that, and that's it you don't have the ability to adapt and change no and i i can you know I but like, you don't no i'm someone that likes to finish what i started but that's I'm not how the, that's not how it works here oh, no i understand if, if we're doing a live show let me let me ask a question if you're working on a very important piece of best of say or even a tape that i asked you that i said i really need and something happened on the other was monumental i don't know somebody said something and i need that tape right away not only do I expect that type of tape right away, I expect you to move fast on it. Instead, you're like, well, you either want this or you want that. I'm like, well, I want this. This is important. That's how the show operates. Okay, Gary. Scott, no, can you I do that? Can you do that? Uh, can, yeah, sure, I can do that. Will you commit to Gary from now on when he interrupts your work? And it's important to him, therefore it's important to Howard. Will you stop and do it without complaining, without moaning? Okay. He Is won't that do it, I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll do it. I'll tell you why, uh, Patty's not being honest. Because he doesn't believe Gary is acting in my best interest. Of course I do. Well, well you know what? That's why I want you here, Howard. That's exactly why you're part of this. Gary is, is my spokesperson, no, listen, and if he you tells know, you to do something, you do it. You're it? I, I understand Gary that. is your superior. No, I know that. I understand that. Here, right. Here's a problem, too. I'm going to be working on something he said. I need this right away. Someone will come down and say, Gary needs you to do this without any further instruction. Right. I mean, when does he need me to do this? I don't know. Right now. No. No, they don't know that. Oh, I see. 
They don't know that. And that, a lot of times that happens. They don't, like, an intern. Why, did you, not, why are you not being honest? Why did you leave here yesterday I, when you were not sick? I really was. No, you weren't. No, I was. You could be honest. Totally, you sick of Gary. No. <laughs> <laughs> you left early because you had a stupid little fight with Gary. Absolutely, was totally. So are you going to storm out of here like a baby every time no, you have no, a problem no, with Gary? No, no. You yeah. tell Pat, look him in the eye I, and tell him you're I, not going to do that. I'm you not going to do that. I've already told him. I was he threatens right. all the time. Full of anxiety. I never do. But I did it once yesterday. You admit that your battle cry is, I'm out of here and I don't need this. Um, and that, again, goes to, well, if you don't need it and you're out of here, if you don't need it, I don't need it. I no, want you to need it, believe I, it or not. I want you to need I, to be here. Did you hear? Hey, did you hear? Scott, did you hear Gary? He wants you to need to be here. He says he respects you, even right. though you said you don't respect him. That's correct. So that should make you feel what? It makes me feel good. I mean, I, you know, I like to be respected and okay. like people. And, but that was a point you made to me that you didn't feel respected by Gary. Right. I respect your work, but I don't respect your attitude. My attitude sucks. Can your attitude I can, change? I, my attitude can change. I admit, I do have a bad attitude why? at times. Why? I, I can tell you why. It's money. Scott, uh, really? A lot of it has, it has to do with that. Yeah. Goes, what do you want from us? We don't pay you. I know, I know that. But, but, but I, I do resent the fact that Scott looks at me and nobody knows how much I make. But I'm sure in Scott's mind, I will guarantee you that whatever Scott thinks I make, is nowhere near what I mean because everybody thinks that I'm like some millionaire. No, so, no, everybody thinks I, I'm a millionaire too. But no, we, we actually don't. Nobody think that. thinks you're a millionaire. You, tell, you know why we don't think? <laughs> we, every, no, I'm not, I'm not here. You, you'll tell us I, every not, step of the way that you're. Every, you know, no, everybody that that fans I'm talking about. You work in a Howard Stern show. You Stop must make banging on the bad equipment. You must make a good stuff. living. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I make for a living should in no way impact on whether I need you to do something. And here's my point: when you accept the job, right? Do it. You got to do the job the best you can. Right. If you don't like your wages, leave. Or Absolutely. tell management you want more money or you leave. Now, I've said that to him before, and he has taken that as a sign of me not respecting him. I've said, I, listen, we like having you here, but I didn't tell you to keep this job. If you don't like it, you should move on. And he thinks that's me telling him, get out, which it isn't. I'm saying either enjoy what you're doing here and live with what you got, or go. Is that wrong? No. That's my attitude. And it doesn't mean I don't respect you. I mean, just Nine. bring a new attitude. In addition to this, Gary, you also have to change a little. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to change and bring a new attitude, Scott? Sure. Some of the things he said from you, Gary, he doesn't like when you walk away from him when he's talking to you. I do that. I do do that. Why? Why? Well, because, we, because no, because we go because what what'll happen is we're going over the same ground again. It's it's a, it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's this conversation that goes around and around. I'll give you a perfect example. I, I, and probably on one of those tapes when I walked away, eighty-five percent of Scott and mine's fight have been over best of. And what happens is Scott is no longer at a place where he can produce best of. So he needs help, okay? The help should come from other engineers. He's got a chief engineer, Richie, who has to go out and find him freelancers. Scott will come to me and he will say, um, we have nobody, I can't get best of them. What are you gonna do about it? And the answer is, I'm not gonna do anything about it. See, I give you the material, you are an engineer. If you can't get more engineers on, why has it now become my headache? That's you and your department's headache. Why is it my fault that you don't have the manpower to do it? And I'm not, and I say to you, I'm not in charge of manpower. I don't That's hire. Right. I don't fire. See, the, I, I the, the boss nobody around. But, it's not no, my decision. But you go to your boss. You go to your chief engineer who is in charge of that. You say, I need help. Well, you know what he's going to get. Tom Chiasano doesn't help him get any help. Well, I, I got to get some credit now. They have. They, we have worked out a deal. But even before that, forget about the fact that you're now allowed to do overtime. Before that, Tom has given you people. You guys have not been able to find the people that you need to do the job. Again, I don't know why it's my fault. In other words, should I be out there looking for freelance engineers to produce best of? No. I don't believe so. No, no that's, that's what they I should agree be doing. with you. It's not your job. You do agree with me. You do put it on me. I believe that it's your job to, you should go to the people that have to hire them, not me. And we have. And what, what ends up happening is you guys, you know, these, these freelancers quit and then, and, you know, everything. And also, you oversee the whole project. It's a very complicated process. It's not complicated. You oversee it, correct? The, the doing of best of it. You oversee it. And when, it, and when it's getting to be a month before best of it, it's not done. I always say, Scott, you should be the one that should be afraid, going, oh, my God, we don't have enough best I of it. Instead, it's me. And Scott goes, he puts his arms up in the end. He goes, I got nobody. What do you want from me? But, Gary, despite best of You'll work on not walking away from him when he's talking. As long as he doesn't yell, I will stay. Okay, that's... Can you do that? Yeah. Why do you yell at him? Because uh, he can't yell at his wife? I feel... See, that's where I, get, I feel I don't get respected. But he feels... I, 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 I also think that Scott feels I'm the only one here that he can yell at. He's not going to yell at Howard. Right. He's not going to yell at Fred. He's not going to yell I at mean, Robert. Scott, can you stop yelling? Yeah. You're like, I, Scott. I am. I just heard these tapes of you yelling. Yell. Yes, I do. Yeah, you yell. But that's... that's. Can like you said, stop yelling? Like I said... It builds up, and, and then I go, 
I mean, that's... Tell, tell Howard why it's building up in you. Tell him. Tell him what you told it's me. It's frustration. I mean, you know, I'm... Do you feel part of the team? No, sometimes I don't. I'm made to Who feel... Who cares? Like... I know. Please. Howard. That's the other Howard, Howard, that's, Howard. That's, that's what you feel. <laughs> what? Howard, wait. Time out. Howard. Howard. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. What am I, your daddy? Yeah. You are the CEO, Howard. Father, Hold on. Daddy. Hold on. Howard, oh, you're the CEO God. here. CEO nothing. Who wants to hear this crap? No, Howard, you got to tell him he's important. He is important, he is. but he better he be what he needs to be a pat on the back every ten seconds. He and see, I tell you something. He is important. Hear that? How, how many times? How something? many times? I tell him all the time. It, yeah, it makes me. Feel he good. gets upset when you forget his birthday. I'm not married to this crazy <laughs> dude. Gloom. The birthday. It's his birthday. birthday. I don't care about your birthday. What's? I mean, let me ask you a question. What's the thing that that, that Howard or this show has forgotten you for that has hurt the most? Uh, probably Robin not inviting me to do. Birth, your birthday. Your birthday. <laughs> but here, I mean, Howard, you understand something? This came out in the green room. I feel that that comes back to me, in a, you know, in the sense that he's got this resentment, and he doesn't know where to put it. And sometimes he's, you know what I mean? Like he Gary, you're right. Scott should have been there. Where's Robin? Robin must know. She, she can't take it. She's a dude. I was just gonna say, why didn't she invite uh, Scott to the birthday party? How could she leave in the middle of the? Well, her, her, her excuse was she had to cut the line somewhere. Right. You know, and, and then Scott fell. The line. Well, it's true. How many people could she invite? But Scott could name six people that were there. Uh, obviously, that... I named Benji as one of them because he was invited, and he's only been here a few years, and I've been here 19 years. Why was he invited? Why was I the line? And, you know, well, you'd have to ask her that, but she left. We already went through that on the air. Was... No, but, but, but the point is that it does come back in this festering It builds up, right. It's okay, all... to build up to until yesterday where you said something that you do regret, right? I said, I said something, probably one of the most horrible things I've ever said to a person. I, I was, you know, I apologize. What did you say? And, I said to Scott, good luck finding work in a year, meaning when we leave here, good luck finding work. Now, I said to you, Pat, I'm not the guy that hires and fires people here. I don't even have my own job. But it felt good to hit him with that hammer. It did. It did. I mean, he got, he pushed me to the brink, and I pulled I, out the heavy I artillery. I want to ask you, how, why did I push you when you initiated the abuse on, on me? Well, because you immediately started... You, 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 why was that? Answer the question. It's... It, it, I, Scott never appears to have anything to do with anything. The, the arms go up like this. I, I don't sitting. know. I don't know. And, and, and then it's immediately followed by him explaining to you how hard he's working at that moment. And I suggest to you that this can't be solved because Scott will always have a deflated sense of ego because none of us think about him enough. He's an endless pit of D. And some words happened today, Howard. What happened? I knew that Scott and I didn't get along, and I thought it was because I felt, you know, I, he felt I didn't respect him, vice versa. But I found out for the first time that Scott really doesn't think I'm talented enough to be doing what I'm doing. Is that true? Now, is that true? He doesn't respect me. He doesn't think that I deserve to be, no, he, be honest, Scott. the way I am by everyone else. That hurts. Be honest. Well, not be Now's good. the time to say it. Say it, baby. You hear that? He's hurt. Be honest. I am, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Say it, Scott. No, 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 I didn't think... You're talented. You, just, you should have said earlier, you don't think... I said, why don't you say it to any of these other guys? And you go, because you don't think I work as hard as you, and you don't think I'm as good no, as you. No, you work hard. I'm, I'm not I'm not debating that. You don't, don't think you jealousy? Does. Are you jealous of him, or do you really think he's incompetent? I'm not jealous. Um, I can see something. You're not, not jealous? Incompetence. What? Incompetent? You're not jealous of Gary? Of, of his relationship with Howard? Of being in the in crowd? Am I jealous? No, I of his I, work, I of his pay. I don't think of I'm jealous of yes or no. In crowd, I mean, no, I'm not jealous. If you see it as jealous, I don't feel it as. Jealous. So what do you see it as? Resentment. I, I don't. But why? Yeah, why? Why resent? You why? can't have what he has. He's him. Why? Do, how come? Why do? Why do you resent me and say it? I'm not picking on it, but why don't you resent Benji? Benji's got a great job. Benji's in the in crowd. Benji works hard. Why don't you resent him? And why me? Do you feel you could be a better producer than Gary of this show? No. I, it's not what I do. I, I, you know, I'm not a producer. I, I couldn't. Then why do you resent him? I guess, I, you know, I feel that he gets a lot of attention and praise. Where Wouldn't that be jealous? I don't... What is she doing? Let, her, let him lay in on answer. Where I, where I, I feel I work equally as hard and don't get as, as much. So you're jealous of him? If, if that's what you call jealousy, I guess... I what do you call I, jealousy? I suppose I am. What do you call jealousy? Being, um... You know, of ha I guess him having something that I don't. Right. Aren't you? Well, you aren't described a bunch of things I, you want that he has. Aren't you want. angry that he gets personal appearances and you don't? Yeah. Aren't you, um, are be you, honest. Yes. Aren't you angry that but I? I, I, aren't, I I'm, <laughs> wait, aren't you angry that I did the trim spa campaign and made money? I know you were very upset about yeah, that. Yeah, I would have liked to be part me. of that. But no, but, part of it. But but nobody asked you to do it. But 
but right. I'm on the air more than you. Right. I'm not more important than you. I don't think, but I'm on, I'm more visible than you. And that's you know what he just said. You're more important. He's Gary. No, and and the, and they felt that I was a more visible person to do okay. the curse by thing. That's fine. They made the decision. But then. but still, I feel I hear in your voice. Pat, what can Scott do with this jealousy that he has of Gary? He's focused on Gary. Right now, he has to purge himself of it. He has to admit right How now in front that? of you, he's doing it. He's admitting for the first time that he's jealous of Gary. He can't even come to terms with it. See. This is it right now. Okay. And there's nothing to be jealous of. If you're the best engineer. <laughs> I know. Engineer, <laughs> I know. And he's the best producer that's apples and oranges. Right, then we should be the two best people in the business. This is the all-star right. team. That is, absolutely. It's the best radio state, the best radio show in the world, right? Oh, yeah. You're the engineer for the show. That's right. You should look in the mirror and shake your head up and down instead of being bitching and moaning and being in a bad attitude. Okay. And be part of the team. They don't believe you're part of the team. Hey, can yeah, I... you punch in and you punch out. You're a union worker, but we have a team player and a union player at conflict here. I have a question for you, Scott, because this came up with Pat and I earlier. Right. We do the staff meeting every Thursday. Right. Do you come to it? No. Why? It's during... Well, how do you expect to be invited to his birthday party if you don't go to the I'll team meeting? I'll tell you why. Right. I was coming to the meetings every week, right. and then I would go finish what I had to do. Right. So that involved me staying past... My eight hours and then what, involved me getting over and this is where this is where i feel anger okay well it, just, it goes past your hourly wage but in the in the grand scheme of things right. if you're in that staff meeting where we talk about today pat croce is coming on and we need three podiums set up with three microphones right. instead of in the morning you're going nobody told me even though you'd have to stay a little extra in the in the long run wouldn't it a make your life easier and b make you more important to us yes then why don't you do it that's, no, what, that's no, one of the things that's always when, when we start doing it I'll start Thursday with a positive attitude. At the next meeting, with a positive attitude. And if the meeting ends at twelve fifteen, don't tell everyone I didn't get paid for the fifteen minutes because I think it helps you as well as us. Well, it's not fifteen minutes. It's like it could be an hour. It could be an hour. It could be an hour and a half. Scott, the point is, you want to earn respect. I do. And and earn respect the by investing more time. Right. Okay. They want you in the but, meeting, but you agree yes. or that you wouldn't want to work for free either. You don't come in here to get paid nothing. I don't come here to get paid nothing. I don't think you're treated uh, well as an engineer in terms of, but he's right, Pat. You are the best engineer. I have fought for you all along for you to work here. I believe in you. Thank you. If you have a, a, if you have a money dispute, well, it, it, Gary isn't the guy sitting in bad mouthing you, and I'm not the guy bad mouthing you. We're, we're, we're saying you're the best engineer in the business. Did you hear that? You don't hear it. No, I know. But Tom Chiasano is trying to get in on this, but yes, I, I do want to say one more thing. Coming in every door he can find. I just want, Here's I just, Tom. Can I just say one more thing? <laughs> yes. Because Pat put me on the spot, and he said to me, right now, if you had to, if you were in charge and you had to decide whether to take Scott with you, would you? And I said, the answer is I don't know. And he said, why? And I said, because, I said, here's the deal. I love Scott's work. Scott's work is not in question. It's Scott's attitude. And if his attitude is better, I'd take it with me in a second. But I don't have that choice. You hear that? It's my attitude. No, I can, I can totally And that's your choice. That's, I do have a bad attitude. And it's just because that's of your choice. That's been over the years of, of not... So when are you going to purge it? When are you going to let that rest? That'll be right now. Do we have your word on it? Yes. I think one additional point, if sure. you wouldn't mind, Gary... Do you feel apology is due him for Pat, yesterday? Absolutely. I was going to call him last night, but I spoke to Pat, and we were going to do this on the air. I wanted to call you after you left yesterday. That was probably the meanest thing I've said to anybody, and I apologize for it. I accept. How do you feel hearing that from Gary? Well, <laughs> I mean, How do you I, feel? I feel good, because it takes a man to admit that he was wrong and apologize. Absolutely. I, I knew I thank you. the second I said it, I might have well just stuck a knife in your heart. And, and anybody I told that I said it just went, oh, my God. I thought that was pretty low. I Tom, do you want to add something to this? If Gary and Scott thought it was important for Scott to attend the, the Thursday meeting and then stay overtime and do and complete his day's work. Well, that's Tom. So, if somebody is going to come to me and say, hey, this is important. He should be here. Not, not sure, Tom. And I'll tell you why. Because you know that for a long time there was that a was, no. But that was then. That that was, was but then. that got lifted this, a month ago. No, it was more than that. The, the, the no overtime edict for Scott. Right, which was a, cre a, a creation that, or a Scott's creation, because he said some things that were said on the air that got the CEO of the company to say, and that's more you don't like it here? And that's more yeah. resentment. See, that's another that's more, I Scott was being honest begin. on the air on a radio show, and I got the, the S kicked out of me by the big, big bucket right. in the company. All right, here's the Why thing. wouldn't I feel resentment? You know, you open your mouth and you'd be honest, and then all of a sudden, bam. But, but there were plenty of times but, after that. I'm sorry, but i got to say, there were plenty of times after that, as time went on, when it was important for Scott to stay and do overtime where I would approve overtime. All right, there it is. I, is this, this is, I guess it's resolved, Pat. I think it's resolved. 
You're getting overtime. You're going to develop right. a better attitude. Yes, you better. feel part of the team. Yes. Gary, Bubba Boo is not going to ignore you, turn around, but you also have to respect his position and what he does. Okay. What is it, Benji? It's just not coming out. Scott is treated like dirt around here. By, well, by, just, by interns on up. Well, I'm not by, saying... By, by, but it by, works by, both ways, I gotta tell you, because Scott will treat interns like dirt. Never. I never treat interns like dirt. I have... Don't make interns, me start the parade. Who did I treat like dirt as an intern? A lot of, a lot of the interns say that you will yell at them. And I, you, you should... Is that true? Do you yell at interns? I have on occasion yelled at interns. Is that a yes? Yes. I don't, I don't like to because they, they're here to help. And they work. <laughs> this is some case, huh? Uh, yeah, you know, this, this is going to blow your mind now. To be fair, what's it cost to have you here full time? <laughs> Talk to Tom about <laughs> that. Tony yeah. Can I say one thing in closing? Yes. Scott's not obligated to stay at this job. I'm looking at a guy who feels like he's not respected, that's treated can, like dirt, that's true. who continues to stay. And there's a part of me that says, well, either stand up for yourself and go somewhere else or right. sort of take what you have here and say, this is, these are the cards I've been dealt, and this is how I'm going to play it. Makes sense, Scott. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I can leave anytime I want, I suppose. I mean, you know, if I don't like it, then... And then or you can choose a better attitude and attack this job. Right. Become... You know what? Let me say this about Scott, because nobody's coming to poor Scott's defense. <laughs> right. Scott I feel loves like... this job. But it's hard why? to tell. I'm he trying to figure out now why I love this, this job. job. I, I wouldn't know I that. I don't think... He, you don't recognize I that. I don't, because he, he never lets me know that. He's not recognized for loving. I see it. He loves this job. I would never know that. I wouldn't. All you do is complain, and right. I think, and I, I think, do, I how, do. how would I know you love this job? Scott, is Robin right? Do you love this job? I absolutely love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I mean, even... <laughs> I bet you didn't Why even you know I knew that, Why Scott. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Where are you going to go? Yeah, real quick. Where am I going to go? Let's be honest. No, I'm oh, not, but even right. so, he absolutely loves being associated with this show. He loves working on this show. He Some takes resolution. great pride. Robin, we have to just add a little resolution here. Scott? When Gary asks for something, right. one Do of those it. urgent Here's questions. Pat has made me realize something. i got to say the guy's good. In order to be respected and remembered and considered, you've got to make yourself invaluable. Okay. And your work is top-notch. Thank you. I've got to Tom many times. And believe me, Tom's no fan of yours, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I'm going to tell you something. I haven't noticed it. No. If you left tomorrow, I don't even think Tom would notice. He would love me to leave But I would notice. I tell him what a great job you do. Thank you. I tell him all the time what a great job you do. Thank you. I said, Scott is invaluable. Don't make me cry. No, I'm telling you. Scott, do you And I've told you this. And enjoy this. This is I've what you're told you, I've told you this before. Yes. I've sat you down and said, Scott, you're really important to me and the show. Be part of the meetings. Okay. Be part of the intern program here. Be part of everything. Make friends with everyone. Be enthusiastic. If you are, if, if it's true what Robin says, that you love the job, then let everyone know you love the job. Embrace it. Be proud to be a Howard Scott. Stern show <laughs> a guy. A young lover of And you will become even more valuable, even, dare I say to Tom. Tom's like, God, this guy's so upbeat. He keeps things going. Yeah, it's really hard. We can't lose him. <laughs> It's if hard. Howard ever leaves, I, I gotta have this guy. That is. Now, Robin, why didn't you invite Scott? I'll tell you why. You don't even have to answer. She didn't invite you to the party because who thinks of you? You're never that's around. That's not <laughs> it. That's not it at all. Everybody was thought of, but I had a set number of people I could invite, and I had to cut in various places. So lots of people I would have loved to have been there couldn't be there and by the way yes scott does fight with interns here's a tape of scott fighting with the interns oh, I, I didn't deny that i didn't fight. that's right just so everyone knows we're not making stuff up you've got to get a better attitude deny that. absolutely go do your little thing okay you're a f intern that's right pal yeah really and you're a f 50 year old and you're acting like you're in sixth grade okay look recess is over what is your problem? What is your problem? What is your problem? Do you understand what, what's going on here? You have no clue what's going on here. So before you open your mouth, why don't you find I out have some no facts? Because okay? you're not telling me. Why don't you find out some facts before you open your mouth? What, okay? what are the facts that you're talking about? Huh? Oh, well, there you go. I could play the whole thing. This will change, right? <laughs> well, if somebody disrespects me and steps all over me and hits me over the head with a baseball bat, what do you expect me to do? Like, uh, oh, hold on. Can, I, can I answer that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I answer? 
Do I do it the wrong way? No, nope, it is. is I'm, I do get angry with you, and I do, you know, even this morning with Sal, I might have jumped on a little bit about the farting thing, although that was inappropriate. But I take a lot of crap around here, and I swallow a lot of crap, and there's lots of times where I love to say to people above and below me, go after yourself, and I don't. Takes two people to fight, Scott. One's got to have a good attitude, one's got to, you know, if, if there's a bad attitude, then somebody's got to have a good attitude, or you wind up with an argument. And people with bad attitudes don't get good things more often than not. I know that, but I just don't like being taken advantage of. That gets me really, you know, worked on. But okay. taken advantage of by an no, intern? I mean, well, if somebody comes and just starts, you know, ragging on me or cursing They're me out, I don't know what started you. that argument. I don't even remember it. You know what? We, we had a, two semesters ago, an intern came in here on his second day and started really making fun of me. I was pissed at that intern the entire semester, but I didn't let him know it. He left, I shook his hand. I thought we gave that guy a great opportunity, and he immediately turned on me for no good reason. Well, he'll never but, have a job with you either. But, but fine, but if, you know what I mean? Like, I'm done. I'm not going to sit there and hammer an intern. I know how I feel. I am confident enough in what I do to not care what he thinks, meaning the intern. Right. That's a good point, Scott. Pat, uh, he told you, Howard Stern told you that you're the best engineer on the planet. <laughs> so yeah. no one, so no one unless you give them permission, can make you feel lousy now. No one. No intern. Blah, 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 no one. Your problem is you don't believe that I'm telling you the truth. Do you believe him? I, no, I do I believe you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You don't believe me. You think that you're here just because, well, no one else is here. No, you're here because I wanted you here. And you know how... But I think one of Scott's biggest problems is he's just not being heard. He's not being... I, I'll tell you something. Well, who would listen to him with that you monotone? Know what? But the funny thing is, you know, like everybody's saying, well, Scott doesn't yell. Scott yells at me all the time, and I just stand there and tell him, when he's finished, I give him whatever I want him she to just do. He goes and does it. Well, you're lucky him. she has a good attitude. <laughs> yeah, she laughs Other me. people don't. <laughs> and the other thing I want to say to Scott, I started to think yesterday about what life on this show would be without Scott. And I oh, sort of think that... How good would he, it be? No, no, he knows... I'm not talking about the attitude. I'm talking about the quality of the work. He knows the show better than anyone else. And trying to teach someone new that would be very difficult. These new guys do good work with the current stuff. Scott's got the history of the show in his head. He's got 20 years of knowing what I want and what you want in his head. And I can say yeah. for a fact that he will go out of his way to do whatever he can for you. If you need something, Scott, we'll turn over this see, I don't see that. Sounds like a hey, Pat, here. punch Scott in the face. <laughs> Let's see what happens. See, you don't, Gary, you don't see that. I'll tell you why you don't see that. Because you usually send down stuff with an intern. Here, give this to Scott, and then you're you're oblivious to what No, no, I, 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 listen, I know. All right, let me, let me look. Pat, no offense to you. You did a great job, but oh, how are you get these two? It's tough. It's tough. All right, Pat is uh, a relationships expert. I thought he did a great job. He did good. Yeah. He did a but real good job. Tough. But you, you two, two are tough. You two are very thick. We're brick walls. Yeah. <laughs> wait, let's end it. How would like this? Come on. What is this? Hugs. Hugs. Oh, come wait. on. No, no, no. I'm Pat, sick. Pat, no, 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 come on. Can I say it in my best Philly accent? I ain't no homo. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come Hug on. each other. Get in here. Go ahead. Oh, get come on. You're on the same team. Hug. Huh? Get in there. Give it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 there you go. Howard. Howard. Congratulations, Pat. You've just worked with the two most difficult people on the planet. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah. You think it's resolved? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am going to try. I am going to try. I'll I try myself, myself too. That's we'll it. It all starts with you, the You know, I'm not going to be angry. Yeah, we'll try. Right. That's it. I want you to be able to respect him. I, right. And I want him to be able to I, listen to you. Okay. That's it. That's all. Again, he's right. It's all here. It's your choice whether what attitude you choose. No, I understand. And I, I totally understand that. You can this place. You're in the room. <laughs> you heard it from him, so I don't think you believe him. Now you got to be able to believe him. Okay. Uh, Gary, was there anything that, that was said that hurt either one of you in there? Yeah, that's... Well, I think I found out that... I, at, at first, I think that I got the impression that Scott didn't respect me, but now I think I feel it's more jealousy, which is easier for me to accept than not respecting the job that I do. I think it's, I think it's jealousy. I think it's, you know, it took a ways to get around that, but it, to the, but the, right, right. that was it. We got to it. And that makes you feel better. Now he's purged it. You all know where you come from. This is a new slate. Start for it. Let's go, man. Well, we have also a new um, era of poetry. <laughs> Well, some of us. And remember, you don't want to be the producer. <laughs> That's good. You don't want to be the producer. He doesn't want to be. No, 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 no. I know I never can do this show. It's impossible. He has, to, he has to know how to bullshit with people in a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. And he, he, I'm not the one that can get conversation going like he can to entice somebody to come on or to get a guest or whatever. It takes a, It does take 
a certain talent, I guess. What I'm dying to know is, if you don't respect me, where'd you think a job? <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> all that nothing. So, Pat, you just mediated a little tip between Gary and Scott. How do you think it all panned out? I think it panned out pretty well because now Scott realizes that he was jealous. And that frustration built up into rage, and he never said he was jealous. So now he's purged himself of that. He's going to help. He's going to try to start creating a new attitude. It's his choice. He knows that. He heard Howard Eskin say he's the best engineer on the planet. So there, his ego has been boosted. So regardless of interns, Gary, anyone else, they can't pull him down unless he gives them permission to pull him down. That's what I was talking to him about. Gary, on the other hand, has now earned the respect from Scott because he's apologized. He's admitted that he's done wrong in the past, that he's jumped on his case, but they have to realize that communication is the key to this relationship in the future. Because if Gary asks for something, that means Howard's asking for something. And Scott's got to jump on it. And if he can't do it, he's got to tell him why. All right, you had a good time, Pat? Had a great time. It was fun. Right, thanks for coming down. My pleasure. I'm from MrGay.com. I'm Angel, and I'm MrGay.com from Spain. I'm Phil, I'm Mr. Gay, I'm from the UK and Ireland. Hi, I'm Brad, I'm Mr. Gay, I'm from Australia. And we're here to play Queer Factor. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> how, do you think, how do you guys feel about playing Queer Factor? Well, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, okay. We're a little cautious, but we're ready. Now, what do you guys think of Howard Stark? He's great. He's great. He pushes that. Oh, we love him. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you guys been from other countries? Have you guys heard of him before? No. Yeah. No. And what have you heard about him? Uh, Monkey. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. He's a very nice guy. Really? <laughs> like, what have you heard? And we've seen his movies about that. Too. Oh, <laughs> we love him. Yeah. Okay. Can okay. you guys say something? I think he was sure. fabulous as far man. Oh yeah. Well, he can be aggressive. I think he is. Yeah, and moisturizer. Alright, guys, good luck. We'll see you in a few minutes. Cheers. There's a bunch of gay dudes here. There you go. See, they're not Mr. Gay Universe, they're Mr. Gay.com Universe. Oh, big difference. That's a big difference. Yeah. Gay.com. Yeah. Do gay men want to see a pageant? I don't know. I, I just, this sounded kind of funny when we were in the, uh, in the meeting and. Now Some things just sound funny, but you don't need to see them. <laughs> now it's <laughs> sounding kind of gay. All right, here's MrGay.com Universe. There's five of them. I guess they're all competing for the title MrGay.com Universe. And what they have to do? I'm going to find out. It looks like a woman. Wait That's a, a minute. Chick. It's a chick. That's a dude. <laughs> She's, She's the interpreter. interpreter. Oh, you're an interpreter. Hi, Howard. I took you were a gay guy. I went, that's crazy. She's interpreting for Mr. Spain. Oh, I thought oh, you spoke. Spain. I thought you spoke fluent gay. Hey guys. <laughs> so these guys really are from all over the world. They are. These are gay men from all over the world. They sure are good looking. It's a gay Thank buffet. You. It's a gay buffet. Hello, Mr. Gay. Dot com number one, how are you? Hi, I'm feeling good. Oh, you're the guy who doesn't speak English? Yeah, he doesn't speak much English. No. He's from Spain. No, I'm from Spain. Spain, from Madrid. Spain's cool. Yeah, Madrid I got, is beautiful. I got no Thanks. problem. I got no problem with Spain. Okay. If, I think they're good to us. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, well, they did pull out yeah, their troops. Let's see. La verdad es que sí queremos mucho a Estados Unidos. Nos gusta. He yeah. says that Spain really loves the United States. Oh, we love it. I, my favorite vacation spot, Cancun, is in Spain. <laughs> oh, stop it. Que sus vacaciones favoritas en Cancun fueron en España. My jokes aren't my jokes aren't as funny in Spanish. That's so good. All right, let's go to the next guy who knows how to speak English. Where are you from? I, I represent USA and Canada. Now, how do you? How do you? Why, why do you want to be Mr. Gay dot com Universe? Well, I, I looked at it just as a chance to further my career. Actually, in modeling. Acting. Are you gay? I am very gay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you gay to the 10th power? <laughs> have you ever banged a chick? I'm, I'm just, I have actually. You have had sex with a chick. Yeah. I bet tons of chicks go after you. Yeah, uh, that's a... I, sometimes. What a waste, yeah, man. Always. If I looked like you, do you imagine oh, the chicks I'd be waste. doing? It's not a waste, so, yeah. but thank you. So what do you do? You got a boyfriend or you, you hang out with a lot of dudes? I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. someone. Chicks must hit on you like every day, right? Uh, I got my good days. Did you ever just say to them, look, man, I'm gay? I appreciate it. I look at it as a compliment. Yeah. yeah. But it goes nowhere. Uh, you know, I have a lot of girlfriends that that are, are you know, they may have hit on me in the past. Or, do gay guys do gay guys offer you money for sex? 
Well, I think I think it happens to a lot of us, yeah. yeah. How much? How much is the most you ever got offered? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I kind of just pass it off. Actually, because there's this whole gay thing where if you're a good-looking gay dude, you can sort of be like a houseboy. Yeah. But basically, you're there just to have sex with some old queen. What a yeah. gig! Yeah. Right. What a <laughs> great gig! Yeah, you can get taken care of. You can definitely get taken care. Yeah. Of. I read an article on it. it was oh, pretty really? Wild. Yeah. It was like these young, good-looking guys. Get, get, like they hook up with some pathetic old queen who can't get laid, yeah. and they um, and they milk them for yeah. every dime. You know what I heard happens though? It's long term. It doesn't work out because then you get older and then you're, you're traded in for yeah. another one. So oh yeah, oh, got definitely. No careers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like in five years, you're totally used right. up. <laughs> God, I wish I was gay. I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> but by the same token, yeah. you gotta still sleep with the. I imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. Old I imagine. Gay, gay queen. Right? Yeah, well, he's an old powerful queen who could, you know, he tr trots you around at all the parties. Yeah, but right. if you're oh. a bottom, you don't even have to look at the guy. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like, but, that's how I manage. But sometimes you get traded off to some of the other old queen's friends. Oh really? Uh, right. Lesser. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What does he know about being a bottom anyway? Oh, he's a power bottom. Yeah. I, I've been called a power bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's my power bottom. <laughs> So what's his type? I mean, what do, what is uh, Mr. Uh, U.S. and Canada like in a man? Yeah. Oh boy, I, I look for the eyes. Actually, I like I like uh, I like. That's why I'm wearing sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, watch out, Howard. No, so when did you have sex with a woman? How old were you? I was 18. 18. You tried. You figured you knew you were gay, but you said, you know what? Maybe I can't do it. I was a little scared actually of being of being out and being gay actually. So. So you probably had a super. I thought hot about it. You know, it's growing up. I mean, it's been with me. You know, I, I checked out a brother actually. <laughs> were you in, uh, were you in, uh, so you were in high school, was it like the hottest yeah. chick in the high school you got? Yeah, she was a great athlete and everything, she was, she was like a catch in the century. She was, she was hot. Wow. Yeah, but he's in the... I was in love with her actually for, for a good, good amount of time, until school, college came. Yeah, that's right. when you know you're gay when you're in love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. When you, when you, have sex no, when you listen to a girl. Yeah, you when you listen a lot, you're gay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got a lot of girlfriends, that means he's gay. Yeah. But anyway... <laughs> no, if I'm listening to a girl, it means I'm gay. But that's what I'm saying, he's the guy who wants to hear what the girls have to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, the, that's the difference between, like, the physical being gay, you know what I mean, and, and looking for that general quality. So what, now, what, now, what about this guy next to you? Where, where are you from? I'm from the United Kingdom. United Kingdom, what is that, like London or something? That's Great Britain. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, you guys are all right. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind the They're British. They're good to us. Yeah, we're yeah, supporting right. you guys, so, you know. Yeah, yeah that's good. So how long have you been gay? Like, did you get out of the closet right from birth or what? <laughs> no, um, since I was 20. Did I have a dude check? Yeah. Any good? No. God, I love None it. None at all. It wasn't any good. You know what's great about England? He sounds like... Tell me gay. I'm thrilled that you guys don't like chicks more from me. You know George Michael? You ever do him? No. Nope. He's British. <laughs> you know what's great about it? <laughs> he doesn't sound gay. He just sounds British. Like, everyone from Britain sounds gay. So it's like right. even an accent. Most people from Britain are gay. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't Very know high that. gay population. I didn't Very know that. High. Right. And wh where are you from? Australia. Australia, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. I like that place too, I guess. Yeah, yeah Australia's too. good. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I think I already know who's gonna win. I can kind of tell the good looking dude in the, the middle. The US and Canada, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about being gay that much, but I can tell a good looking guy when I see one. Well, he brought a scarf. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and, and, and why did you win? Why do you want to be MrGay.com? Is your prizes? Yeah, of course. How much? 25,000 US. Oh, well. So that's Sweet. A good incentive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But what can you what do you do after you get this title? Where do you go? Go like, shopping. You go to a cave in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually you get to you get to play for the Mets. You get a contract. <laughs> no, really, what are you gonna do? Like like what is, how do they pick Mr. Gay.com universe? It's up to the online voters actually. I see. Oh, yeah. they post your picture. Yeah. And a little video maybe of you. Or... Yeah, you know. Yeah. So there's no real pageant. No. So you gotta get your friends to do this. Do you have to be in bathing suits and stuff? <laughs> God, I hope yeah, so. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. tiara and all that sort of stuff. No, seriously. But, I mean, what no, are what are the do? pictures of you? Which way? Have any of you guys hooked up? Have any of you guys had sex with each other yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, we've all done each other last night. <laughs> night. Yeah. I would, too. If I was gay, I would have been fooling around. Let's do it. We all yeah, just kind of flew in. Let's go. So, so, so we just, this is our first actual meeting. <laughs> oh, these are all the... You guys are the finalists. Yeah. 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 And what, what about the guy with the cap? Is he in it, too? Are you in it? I beg your pardon. What, where are you? Where, I said, where are you from? I'm from Germany. And you won? MrGay.com Germany. MrGay.com Germany. Yeah. He, he's the one that Howard had a whole bunch of us out partying last night. He got to New York and just took off. <laughs> where'd you go? Where'd you, where'd, where'd you find in this uh, fine city? I don't remember. Lots of tequila and, uh, well, what was the place called again? Splash. 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 A lot of gay dudes there. Did you get any? 
Pardon me? Did you meet hook up? No, no. <laughs> There's a great place you'd love called Tequila and Penis on 28th. <laughs> <laughs> Killer and Penis? All right, so boys, uh, everyone wants to be Mr. Gay dot com. com Universe. But there can only be one of you. When is the final voting? It's on Sunday. Sunday. It's on Sunday. Yeah, well, I wish you all luck. No, it's over already. Well, the voting's finished. They can announce it no. on Sunday. Ah, so you don't know yet? No. no. Any of you guys want to win um, uh, Queer Factor? We can play that, since you guys are all gay. Let's give it a shot. We're going to get you a $2,500 prize right now. Woo! What do you think? Yeah, right. What about that? Two categories. Here it is. I'll, t- I'll explain the whole game to you. If anybody wants to bow out, they can. It's funny hearing this. I'm going to explain to him. What's that? $2,500 for this premium. Just tell them 2500 a minute. I told them. That's right. Donde es la queer factor? What do the rest of you guys do? Do you guys, do you guys are all models or something? Yeah. What do you do? I'm a software consultant. No, oh, that's good. What do you What do you do? Fitness industry. Yeah, yeah, you're in good shape. What do you do? Media salesman. Media salesman? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a few magazine covers and stuff, Instinct magazine and stuff like that out of it. So modeling and stuff's kind wow. of taking off. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I got it. Most of those male models are gay, right? Uh, well, a lot of them. A lot of them tend to be, I think. Yeah. I wonder or, met- or metrosexual. Do you guys like oh, that? it? <laughs> was he into sports in high school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, in the locker room, was he having a great time? No. Like, like I said, I'm not. I was, I, was mainly, I was mainly a little nervous, actually. Yeah, when you're growing up. It's intimidating. Well, seriously, when you're growing really up and you're like in a gym class or you go to summer camp, I don't know where you guys go, but let's say you go to there and all the guys are naked. You must get excited, right? That's a real bonus for being Oh, gay. come on. We don't just get turned on the side of a naked man. You don't? No. Don't that. Well, it's funny because I, I do. I yeah. do. Yeah. you get turned on the side of a naked woman? You're damn right yeah. I do. We don't have quality control. Oh, come on. Yeah. They stop trying to make this a higher order kind of thing. You know, we, don't, we, we don't get, like, boners. Though. We don't get high. Can you say boners? Yeah, <laughs> we don't track our house down to your left. You could have in April. You can't say, in April, you could have said that word, but not now. <laughs> yeah, no, Howard, now I get suspended if they let that on the air. Howard, do you think they get turned up by a naked Benji? What's a Benji? Uh, a Benji. Hey, hey, Benji, stand up. See if these guys like it. A Benji's not a Bajji, no? How many? Okay. Actually, we're not a some Benji, no? All right. Well, each guy is going to be evaluated by you guys right now before we play Queer Factor, all right? <laughs> all right. Benji, you go first. This guy right back here. Stand in front of the guys. Take your shirt off and let them see you. Oh, yeah. Take my shirt off? Oh, well, yeah. All right. You do. We don't. <laughs> he does it. He likes to. All right. Let me go to number one. Would you have sex with this guy right here? Sarías con este hombre ahora? Prefiero contigo. He, prefer, he prefers with Howard. Oh, really? But what about Benji? Would you have sex with Benji? Pero te acostarías con Benji ahí. Definitely not. Not. All right. <laughs> number two, would you? No, I can't say that word. I'm sorry, but... Number three, would you? He'd have to shave his welcome mat. Right. Number four? I'd do my mother before him, actually. <laughs> and number five, what about you? No way. No way. Oh, dear. Because well, he's fat? Maybe he should, no, he should take a lesson of bread, uh, with bread and get some bit, little bit more... I don't know, whatever. How do you call that? Slim? And, uh, Slim fast? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll just uh, set up so I can bag a bag of fruit. got turned down by every time. guy. Go ahead, Fred. Stand up and let the men evaluate why you. Not, why not Artie first? Because right after Benji, I think they're very sour on this room. <laughs> Here he is, Fred, a uh, hot American. Would you, you do? Go. Would you do him? Él es un americano bueno. Está, es un tío bueno. No. 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 Fred with a big too, reject. I'm too fair. Number two. You, you know he's got the country western thing going. I don't know. Uh, no. 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 But he is Almost. an old. He is an old queen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number three. Country western. No. Number four. Yeah, he's got cute eyes and nice smile, but no. You wouldn't do him. Oh, no. All right. No. You're being honest. Number five. Yeah. Would you do him? Um. Well. Maybe at night, no. <laughs> no, not even on your worst night. Gee! Not, not even, even when you're drunk. Not even with all that tequila in you. <laughs> we are getting slammed. Now I feel safe. Uh, I feel good about this. Oh, Artie, you never know, man. Artie, you could be the uh, Artie has cheesecake in the... In all the right, room. number one, would you do Artie? Te costarías con Artie? Arturo. Maybe. <laughs> Artie's a maybe. 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 No. Oh, no. He likes a swarthy one. Well, I think he dresses well. <laughs> you brought him on, on a good day. My sister brought me this sweater. This is a sweater. Uh, 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 would you do Artie, sir? No. no way. Number three? <laughs> He'd be comfortable in London at the bear scene. At the bear, <laughs> bear scene. What do you say? Yeah, well, yeah. those guys are into bear like men. No. Oh, well, no. Some guys are into uh, that. Number four, would you do Artie? I might, because he's a power button, so I might give him a go. <laughs> I might give him a go. Seriously. Yeah, come on. Number five, what about you? Maybe we'll comb his hair on his back, but no, no sex. <laughs> comb the hair on your back and you could have sex with the German. Yeah, that's good news. Listen, Hitler was a fool. Now I'll give you a treat. Look at me. Look. Te acostarías con Howard? Míralo. Right now. No? 
Right now. Right now. Now you want the money. Claudius order. Let's go. Really? I don't know. Wow. What about you, number two? Uh, you know, that's a close one. It's a close one. Like, Howard's hot. Really? Yeah. Oh, what a kiss ass. You know what? No, 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 no. No, he's got a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of, you know, mystique about him, I think, a little bit, actually. That's a good one. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. I think. Mm-hmm. So you're doing him, too? Mm-hmm. I think these guys are just after the 2500 Yeah, I think you're, I think you're, you would not do it. Now, do you have a, a gold medallion as well? <laughs> do I look weirdo-ish? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you do it. Yeah. Number four, what about you? I'm still stuck with the power bottle. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> not me. No to me. No. Still Thank hand. you. And I'm number five, see later on. what about you? I don't do celebrities, but maybe if you go to the address, so let's see. All right, so I'm no. You know I haven't understood a word you've said so far? <laughs> You're so a no. Me, yeah, I'm a no. All right, well, right. two of the guys said they would do me. Yeah. I, and two of the better looking guys. That's what I'm going to say, so. Uh, who's hot? Robin is hot. Yeah, well, let me see you do her. You're not doing What kind of a gay guy are you? What are you talking about? You know, you know, you know, you know, All right, for $2,500. This the winner, the winner of Queer Factor gets $2,500 courtesy of gay.com and a pair of share tickets. Share tickets? Actually, it's better than share tickets. What is it? It's share village people tickets. Share village people tickets. What's that? How gay are you? You don't know what share the village people are? It's a gay band. Yeah, no, well, you know. Anyway, uh, gay.com, get a free week trial and hook up with more men in less time, which is, I know what Fred is into. <laughs> All right, now here's the, there's two stunts. The first stunt is everybody gets a sausage. <laughs> and whoever can swallow the most sausage, <laughs> we will mark it off. The two top finalists go to the, the, the two top finalists go to the next round. The next round is you will be tickled by a gay man. Whoever laughs first loses. Pasan a la siguiente ronda donde te hacen cosquillas un gay. <laughs> y quien ríe primero es eliminado. Are, is everybody in? Yeah. Who was the prize again? $2,500. From you. From gay.com. Oh. What do you care where it's from? <laughs> is, that, yeah, is that the smallest you've got? You think you can handle that whole sausage? Where are we swallowing it? With your mouth. In the All studio. Right. <laughs> In All the right, studio. here we go. <laughs> Our Spanish well, gay.com universe man. Oh, now no. get ready to mark it off. Oh, no. Take down as much sausage as you can. Are you ready? Don't bite. Don't bite it. No lo comas. No lo muerdes. Let's see. No, 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 Five and a quarter. Oh, that's Five not even human. Did you know he already beat three of the porn stars that were here two weeks ago? <laughs> wow, <laughs> ask him how he did it. That was awesome. ¿Cómo lo hiciste? Que fue maravilloso. I don't know. No sé qué. Pensé que era una de verdad. Pensé que era una polla de verdad. Ah, pensó que... I don't know if I can say this. He thought it was a penis. Right. He thought it was a real penis. All right, there you go. Well, you can't say it. No, I don't go up against that. I, 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 oh, I, 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 pretend it's a casting director for One Life to Life. Are, are you nervous? Are you nervous? I'm nervous. All right, Artie gives you advice. Pretend it is a man in very, very powerful position. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. And here we go, Mr. Gay. You can look at Mr. Gay.com Universe <laughs> from America. <laughs> We got four and a quarter. All right. Oh, four that's pretty good. Now, oh, don't take out your cinnamon and everett. Man, don't take out your sausage so D&G marks it with a toothpick. All right. Seven inches gets you to be my houseboy. <laughs> Where you'll meet lots of old queens. <laughs> this is Mr. Gay.com Universe London. Are you nervous? No. Nope. Do you think you can beat the uh, front runner? I have no gag me facts. Oh. oh. Lucky you. Winner. He's just like Tara Patrick. All right. <laughs> Mr. Gay, .com Universe London. Let's quiet down. He's <laughs> taking the sausage and... Oh, my goodness! Oh, my God! Oh, it. Mark it, please. Wow! This is like a new front runner. Wow. Oh, right. Of course it tastes disgusting. Oh, it's supposed to taste disgusting. I've got opera tickets. All right, Mr. Gay London, 
got six and a quarter. Whoa! Oh, I could have taken more, but yeah, I didn't want to show up. Welcome to the party. We call the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, that was All nice. Right. Mr. Gay, going to later on. Mr. Gay. Com Universe Australia. Are you nervous? Uh, no. Have you, have you slept with a woman? Yes. Yes, I have. If you can do something disgusting like that, you can certainly take this. <laughs> Let's see how much sausage you can take. Sausage? Oh my goodness! Oh, we got some real here. Market, market, market! Wow! Oh, 
What are we gonna do in the event of a tie? Uh, Almost uh, back here. Get a little more. Oh, oh he's still getting turned on. He's, sl- he's going to sleep. Uh, oh. <laughs> Take a look. Take a look. Make him laugh. I'm trying. Look. Loving it. You're not taking much at all, right? The tiebreaker is the tiebreaker is banging bench. Can I whip him? No, give him the rib. <laughs> tickle his ribs a little. He's everywhere. He doesn't have any ticklish spots. He's even been under the arms. This one don't have any ticklish spots on it. No? Yeah. You don't have any ticklish spots. I feel you're being too gentle. Tickling nuts was the hardest. He's a hard. Go over there. Go over there. See, look, go here. Where? I think we have a disaster. Guys, we, 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 we gotta stop. I'm not throwing. Yeah, there's no tickling. No tickling. Right, no tickling. Yeah. There's no tickling. All right, all right, all right. Maybe he can tickle him with his tongue. Let the German guy go. The English guy's got some good ideas over there. Hardy's wondering why he's looking at abs and ass. This show has changed. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Thanks a lot, FCC. This gay stuff's pretty intense. <laughs> Let's get, while we get uh, Mr. Germany in the tickle uh, chamber, why don't we uh, take a few phone calls? Robert, you're on the air. Yeah, Mr. Stern, uh, I'm calling from Las Vegas. Uh, they've been cutting a big portions out of the sausage part of their contest. Oh. Well, and the, just now, uh, when you switched over the tickle chair, they just went to commercial. Oh. Where, in Vegas? In Las Vegas, yeah. This is too hot for Vegas. In Sin City? Uh, you're kidding me. Yeah, I'm not kidding, no. Yeah, what is up. going on? What are they doing to my show? Guys, uh, what are they doing to my show? We might as well show? not be here. They're forcing you out, Howard. They're cutting large portions. Uh, all we heard was the beginning of the sausage and then the end of how many inches were. To See? Be- That's See what I'm saying? Uh, sucks, man. It's just a piece this of This is meat. just funny. We're, just We're talking about Vegas We're- where people lose their fortunes every day. And where on the outskirts prostitution is legal. I know. It is? Yes. <laughs> All right, Artie's going to go back. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, I see Mr. Germany's in the tickle post. Let's finish the competition. Make him laugh, Gay Ramon. Come on, go ahead. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, yeah. Why did you laugh? Oh, he's, not, he's not laughing. You know, on go this ahead. show, I never thought I'd hear the sentence, Mr. Germany's in the tickle post. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Germany has a nice physique, too. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> Mr. Germany's been working out. Mr. Germany not tickling at all, huh? But he did not shave. He didn't shave. He got no body here, dude. You don't need to shave. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> don't, get, don't molest the guy. <laughs> you want to get him to laugh, kill a Jew. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get it. What about you guys splitting the prize? How's that? I think two Oprah tickets, what was it again? Oprah? Oprah, Oprah no. Yeah. I said as a joke, $500. And a pair of tickets to see Share with the Village People. That's right. Oh. So why don't we, I guess they're going to have to split, split the it. money. Is that fair? That's great. All right, that's All fair right. for the Village People. All right, so uh, the winner of Queer Factor, since there's a tie, $2,500. Courtesy of Gay.com. These guys are all vying for Mr. Gay.com universe. You boys, you're, you're, you're an okay bunch of guys. I wish you luck. I hope everything's all right. Uh, be careful with all that gay stuff, though. You guys uh, using condoms and things? Absolutely. Yeah, be, be you're careful. You're good and safe, okay? Yeah. yeah. Jess Jenks, what is it? Morning, Howard. Hey. You know, listening to this on the radio is bad enough. How, how are we supposed to watch this on the e-show? <laughs> That'll be interesting. <laughs> Jax, you have no idea. It's going uh, to be a big gay party, all right, on E? That's disgusting. Uh, well, you got to try everything. Mike, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Hey, now. Listen, I love you, man. I love the show. I don't want to talk to you. This is disgusting. Robin, <laughs> talk to me. Robin. Hey, it seemed good on paper. They're beautiful guys. Robin, take off your top or something. You, you got you to gotta make up for this. This is horrible. Hey, the interpreter. Is cute. This is the Howard Stern show. Even Artie said he's standing up. He's watching. Artie, what are you doing? Yeah. Artie got into I'm it. I'm trying to make a living. <laughs> yeah, Artie got into make it. Make a don't... living, man. Don't bring me down with you. Hey, hey, Joey Boots, what's up? I got hey, it. Yeah. Yes. Hey, it's not gay if you're drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. Hey, uh, you got what? the German guy here? <laughs> yeah, the German guy's here. Yeah, Lick McMarsh. Hustle in the foot, Glossen. Meine Schwanz. Oh, hey, Joey, are you what, are you you what happened oh, to you? Oh, my goodness. I thought you were... Well, I'm just having a little fun right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, guys. Good luck. Go to, uh, what is it? Gay.com. Gay. It's gay.com. All right. Well, I, I, you won't be going there? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, Howard. You know what? I might start playing music over there. I'm going to go have eight. I got your back. I got your back. I'm going to go have eight Percocet and a beer. All right. <laughs> gay.com, everyone. Thanks, guys. Good luck with Thanks, your uh, gay universe. Gay, gay Ramon, thank Thanks, you. Guys. Good luck, guys. We'll be back right after this. It sucks. I think if I hadn't 
lifted my shirt, I think someone would have said I had nice eyes or something like that. And I'm, I'm pissed that if Artie can get the bear community, I'm sure I can get the bear community too. No, so. I'm so, clearly a cuter bear. I'm sure there's a bear out there that that wants me. Alright. Can we retake that? Alright, so how do you feel, man? Don't gay guy punch you. Let me tell you something. Uh, I, I, a part of me is genuinely insulted. You want to be wanted by everybody. I mean, everybody wants to want people to fuck them. You know? I don't think it fucked by you. I said you have great fashion sense. Yeah, guy, well, you know what? I'm wearing a sweater that my sister bought me, so that's all he saw. So that's cool. I got it on record. A gay guy thinks I dress good, but he won't bang me. You guys uh, disgust me all day. <laughs> You're really. Yeah, you could do any kind of guy, because I can do any girl. No matter how fat she is. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why the population is waning. <laughs> 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 so, hey, what's going on? So let me ask you guys, who looked the best to you guys? Who looked the best? Yeah. What do you mean? Is it all about looks? Yeah. 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 That's really super fashionable. Who are you guys most attractive to? I'm going to say most attractive. Oh, I think. Uh, all of them. This, this, this guy here. Yeah, yeah definitely this guy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all right. We're talking. Um, <laughs> did you get in trouble? We're telling you. So, so, so how come you guys weren't laughing? Was it Game Ramones tickling or just that he didn't have... Maybe he's a little tickling. They're not tickling. Not tickling at all. I right, know. What was it like swallowing the sausage? Salty. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 It's okay. All right, guys. Did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah. Had a great time. Thanks for coming out, guys. Okay. we go i'm going to turn it over now to mark harris and his radio show here you go mark oh, shut up, you oh my goodness oh, oh please hang <laughs> up howard give it up go ahead next do we have a <laughs> human being out there give it up we need I humans <laughs> might be my last appearance on the Howard Stern Show. See, I think I could take over for him. After all, you that stay tuned know me from the Howard Stern Show. Everybody knows me from the Howard Stern Show. They seem to remember me best for that. So I feel his listening audience will stay tuned, will call in, and we could discuss every matter without one F word. So you're doing a radio show today? I'm going to try my best. Yes, Gary? Yeah. So I was uh, just talking to Mark Harris in the green room. You know, get ready to do his radio show. So I walked in there and I didn't see any young girl. So I said, Mark, where's your daughter? And he goes, oh, are you crazy? She's not coming. We heard that garbage that was on the air this morning. She's not coming here. <laughs> so he turned out she's only 17. She's not yeah. 18. But, um, okay, which one? Well, you, he's the one who sent us the garbage. Which one of you idiots said um, that she should put a gun in her mouth? That's what upset him. Yeah, no, no, that's the show. The show is Mark and his daughter. So, uh, uh, he's going to be giving them advice. The show's called Life with Father. Oh. That's that's the whole premise of this radio show. Is that what he'll be doing in here today? Yes. Exactly. It's him and his daughter, who, who is his co-host, and then, like, his daughter's friends, boyfriends, that also like him. Like, she's got boyfriends. I don't know if I... Like him. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit through that. Uh, what about Mark's love life? We're only concentrating on the daughters? Yeah, it would be great if one of his boyfriends called him on the daughter was there. That, that I would listen to. I'd kill myself if this was my father. <laughs> you I couldn't would, get through it. I couldn't. I would just kill myself. <laughs> You'd scream. I would kill myself. Oh, if forget I could. it. The heroin could not get into my veins quick <laughs> enough. I know. I know I said I'd kill myself if uh, that was my father, but I don't mean like she should go kill herself. I mean that I'd kill myself. I'm just, right. She seems to be doing fine. Yeah. So what can I say to Mark to make him bring his daughter up? He, it's Mark's 10 minutes or five minutes, we think. With his show, I mean, uh, he can do whatever he wants. Does he want to blow this audition? Maybe he wants to get on and scream about that he would never bring his daughter on his radio show. But how do you do life with father without a daughter? I don't know. You want to ask him? Yeah. All right, let him, let him do that real quick, but because I don't want to blow his thing. I want him to do it when he comes in. This is not his time yet. You stand fast and burn fast, the Mark Harris Radio Show. Always a controversy. This is what happens to you. I think you get jittery 
And then you get nervous and you start blowing your own chance. You talking about me? Yes. I'm not jittery. I'm not nervous. So well, I am Rebecca's father. She's 17 years old. Yeah, so. And the garbage that you and your show spew. Well, How is it garbage? Well, he himself says heroin and uh, taking a shotgun oh, to your mouth. Yes, the only he didn't thing, say shotgun yes, to your mouth. The only thing one could do as a father is keep your child happy, guide them through life, and safe. You did that? Absolutely. I don't believe it. Do you do that? Of course. So, then what are you uh, knocking around with all this? The days of the shock jock is just through. Don't oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> That's why I you don't know. I seem to be doing pretty well. Well, what will you do on Sirius when you use the F word? I the will shock use it. The shock is gone. No one cares. No, we, we just, that's because of Mark. The day that you have any comprehension of how to do radio the way I do, yeah. you will be called oh, a I'm genius. Not, I'm not arguing with you. Trust me, hey, I'm not a shock no. jock. Okay. Number one, we talk about, I would say 99% of the show, there's nothing shocking. If honesty is shocking, then that's shocking to you. No, Secondly, with success, I'm not arguing. And with my success, when I go to satellite radio, yes. If someone calls in with foul language, or if I want to pepper my language with foul language, it's like telling Chris Rock, why would you use the F word in your act? Once you use it, it's over. That's absurd. Chris Rock uses it very effectively. You don't, maybe you don't curse, but I do. I wish you luck, and you can believe Oh, I don't need I don't, your luck. You don't? I guarantee you it's going to be huge. Hey, Black, take your luck back. Take you your luck back. I don't, you want you I, don't I, do. I don't want your luck. I don't think more. <laughs> the kind of luck you have, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm a happy person. I don't believe in luck. I you believe don't? in being the best you can be. Yes. And believe me, that's what I do. Well, then I guess. Listen to me, listen to me. Save this for your radio show at 8.30 or thereabouts. I'm going to bring you in. You're going to have... I have you see your set? Look. Yes. That's your you. set. Yes. Do your radio show. Okay. You say you could take over this show when I leave? Fine. I'm I all see. for that. Okay. And it is safe to bring your daughter in. Uh, we wouldn't say anything. We're not going to say anything bad about your daughter. We, we don't, we don't uh, do that. Yeah, no one mentioned a oh, shotgun, Mark. What are we talking about? No. But whatever. Okay. That's your prerogative. You want to bring your daughter in? Fine. When you bring your daughter in, Mark, you can bring her in and you do another. I don't care. It's his radio yeah, show. Yeah, true. Okay. If he wants to bring his daughter in, you don't want to. It's your audition. Five minutes. Right. Get on there. Okay. Do your thing. Okay. Right now, you're mixing it up. You're being very outrageous. Okay. You're being controversial. No, I'm not controversial. Uh, not on this matter. You can talk about that on your show. Okay. Not on my show. Your show. Right. Gotcha. All right. Mary Ann from true. Brooklyn, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Alan. How are you? Uh, I usually bash you. I never bash you, but I saw you on Larry King that night, and I don't think anybody was taking care of Martha Ray really the way you did. They showed all the tapes of you, you know, fixing her hair and bringing her to parties and stuff. And I think well, there was a money. There was money involved. Some people feel Mark uh, did it for the money. I did too, Harry. At the beginning, I thought it was for the money, but actually now I don't. She had seven husbands and an unusual wife, so I think he fit right in. I still think it was for the money. Well, thank you. I still think it was for Thanks the money. For both of you. Mark uh, is a gay I'm man. Excuse me, Marianne. You Mark, wouldn't understand what bisexuality is. Mark is a bisexual man who I feel is more <laughs> than hetero. And I believe it's that there is no way he was in love with Martha Ray. Let's really? ask the question. Yes. I mean, how would I'm he... I'm being honest. I don't I, believe I, you were in love with her. I believe that you... I absolutely adored her. I, as a friend, I don't think you were sexually attracted to her. I don't. I didn't see the old woman that you keep talking about. She was Martha Ray, every inch the star. I wasn't talking... No, not you. I'm sorry, not you. I'm talking you about her. Howard. You saw her as a star. As Martha Ray, the one I grew up with when I but, watched television. And yes. you're in love with, like a lot of homosexual men, you're in love with an era gone by. And you like stardom, and you yes, like the, the I old that Hollywood. On King. So yes. you got to be part of old Hollywood for a while with Martha Ray, that's and then not why and I the bonus her. at the end was money. But that's not why I married her. You, uh, would you have married any old bag? No, she was no. a rich old woman. That's Let my me deal. ask okay. one other question. I want to know just how bi he is. Right. What would you say the split is? I'm going to tell you the split. 20? No, ninety-nine one percent. How do you say it's a hundred zero? How many yeah. women have you slept with in the last five years? Only two last year. If, I mean, I'm supposed to answer. This. In the last five years, but, with, but this is a. You slept stupid, with two women last year. Stupid argument. Well, no, no, Mark. Mark how many guys? Mark, crazy. Swear yes. on the life of your children. One man last year. One man and two women. Yeah, one man for the past four years, and that's over. Maybe we should go by. Why now. is that over? It just couldn't continue, as far as I was concerned. You're no longer in love with him. I never was in love. Oh. Okay. Good companionship, going places. You know. How many times did you do Martha? Your wife. 
I'll be honest, I, I can't because we were married three and a half years. I didn't keep a scorecard. You did it once. No. It doesn't Constantly. matter. It doesn't matter. We you did it more than once? We, yes. You're please. saying you had sexual I, intercourse know, with a stroke it's victim? It's not a question of sexual it's intercourse. It's yes, it intimacy. Is. Okay, intimacy. I rose to the occasion. Is that what you're asking me? No. That's I, it. I'm asking you sexual intercourse. I didn't How many times? down. I, the times. I'm going to tell you once. Well, you're going to tell so me. you legally you consummate. There. Yes. No, in California, you do not have to legally consummate. All right, then zero times. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. That's fine. <laughs> I do not believe you ever made love to Martha Ray. I don't. I don't believe you're totally straight in your mind. Well, I'll tell you what, I am. Pity. Why? I don't want to be with a dude. Well, I, I don't know you. that a dude would want to be with you. I'm not advocating a lot of dudes. Have I know you want to. Act. I know you want to be with me. No. Oh, oh, that's a lie. You? Yeah. No. You would, you would, Why do you you'd think be I down on your knees in three minutes? You're crazy. No, you'd be down on your knees in two. No. Do I hear one? Are you crazy? <laughs> I said, you've got five minutes. You can do anything you want. Take a look at the... We've set up a whole radio station for Mark. Even the microphones have cucumbers and tomatoes. With, uh, actually, uh, do you see the microphones, Robert? Yes, I just saw them. They're beautiful. Very colorful, <laughs> All right, I'm not going to uh, interrupt. Now, Mark, just real quick, before you start your show, yes. do you want me to work the telephones for you? At any point, do you want to take phone calls? I want to take phone calls. I appreciate you doing it. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn it over now to Mark Harris and his radio show. Here you go, Mark. At this very moment, Rebecca's not here, so we're going to do the Mark Harris show with Dennis Donahue. Dennis, say hello to the listening audience. How are you? I like this uh, little apparatus you got here for me. Thank you. Very good setup. And our guest today is Dr. Gilda. Say hello, doctor. Hi, everybody. How are you? A relationship therapist. What book do you have out now? Oh, for your daughter and for other teenagers... Teen Talk with Dr. Gilda, A Girl's Guide to Dating. Okay, what's the secret to your success? To my success? Yeah. Hmm, just be yourself, be honest, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't hide under the covers. So you're a relationship doctor? I'm Dr. a relationship Gilda? doctor, yeah. And uh, how does uh, your husband feel about all that? I don't have a husband anymore. Anymore? You were married, though? Yeah. That's one less relationship. You were married, and what happened? Nothing. Nothing. It fizzled out, just the way a lot of relationships fizzle out. Mm -hmm. So you're a relationship doctor, but your relationship has failed? No, not at all. My relationship ended when it was appropriate to end. Were you married? On, yeah. A marriage is you forever. You just asked that. Didn't you hear that? Marriage is forever. In some people's language. So you're not considering it a failed marriage? I don't, no, I don't believe there are any failures. You see, this is what's wrong with America. You got well, wait, wait, a bisexual wait, wait, wait. guy raising kids. How many kids have you fathered? I now? have four. Four kids. Four daughters. The relationship doctor yeah. has a failed marriage. Dr. Phil. Wait, 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 no, no, no. Give him no, enough no. rope to hang I don't, himself. I don't believe there are any failures. There are only lessons in what to do next. So it's next chapter. And so we go on from one thing to next. Oh, I and agree And there are no... But there's Every no next time, to marriage. Wait, 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 you put a ring on it. You say, you know, to have it to hold till death do you part. Yeah, I mean, it's not separation. Until it fizzles out. Calm Excuse down. Excuse me. There's no marriage. Exactly. There's no marriage Smart. band on your hand. Of course not. I'm no, uh, so you better have, to end a marriage than fight for the rest of your life. Wait a minute. So you're in no... 
situation to be able to look at somebody else's situation. But I'm not telling people how to run their life. My oh, job yeah, is to observe. Oh, you were just telling me how to run report. my life. I didn't tell you how to run. I'm saying my job not, is to observe and report. This is not report. the nature of your show, right? No, we're going to take calls. Okay. Okay, let's take our first caller, please, Howard. Who do you have? You have Rod Stiffington on the phone, Mr. Mark. Stiffington. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm fine. How's your name? Good, good. This is Rod Stiffington. I met you at Jubble Jam in 98. Wait, Remember that? One of the phony phone calls. No, I'm oh, serious. Oh, here we go. We were doing uh, atomic sit-ups uh, in the parking lot. Remember? No caller, or this is just a mock-up situation? Oh, you sure are a brown noser, Mark. Literally. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. That's one for Howard. All right, Mark, you have Wendy the retard on six. Like I need this. Are you on Zoloft or what? What, is she going to give us a dosage? Oh, safe environment and she doesn't have to have bad feelings and i thought uh, this was not growing up in a bisexual house is a safe environment yes well, what's wrong question, the follow wait a minute up. dennis that's a stupid remark a parent is a parent is a parent responsibility and you're not there yet so don't be a little <laughs> well wrong. wait a minute i have a lot to say about go ahead dennis, let's listen to the doctor dennis is sitting here and talking, talking himself about... out of a job <laughs> go ahead talking about everybody's life whereas he doesn't have any of this life experience he's only now, 27 you know what Mark, I have even been on this show, on Howard Stern, commenting on your own lifestyle and naming you, as a matter of fact, trisexual because you'll try anything. And very often, you're out there in an effort to secure a better place for yourself. You have Daniel on line three. Hi. Daniel. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm 14 years old. And I'm having some, like, it's a phone gay phone. feelings. No. Yeah, it's a phone and phone I want, like, You have Vinny on line two. Yeah, I'm so oh, no. <laughs> this is like a piece of crap just going around and around like you're stepping it. Mark, you yeah. lost control of your own shoe. Why is this guy Dennis talking all the time? I didn't lose control. That's a very you're good in your place. Mark, Dennis, Dennis has to figure it out. Don't worry about it. Make me look bad. You sold? You sold? Hang up on Vinny. This is ridiculous. Please. The reason you're there is because I went to Howard and said you were going to do a show about a gay guy raising his daughter. Show some life with father. You got this guy next to you. You know what? Why don't you ask me a question, I, I agree with ask you, Vinny. Ask me a question. Oh, well, then hang up and don't listen. You could have done better. Vinny, so is this, this is how you're eating up time. All right, right, well, we've eaten up five minutes. We've it, heard oh, the mark. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, you did. Thank you, you handled you, five minutes. I kept quiet Thank during you. you did. You're great. That's, That's today on the Mark Harris Show. Yes, I got a question for Mr. Harris. I'm the publisher for Modern Penis Magazine. I'd yeah. like to do a layout with you, Mr. Well, Harris. Well, mother and give her a dildo. Let me see how the people liked it. Okay, Why not? Bring in uh, Re uh, Brett, Rebecca's date. You're kidding. This is your daughter's date. Yeah, she met him this week. You didn't even introduce him. Well, I'd ask you to if you don't. All right, bring him in. Uh, Brett, come on in. All right, Bill, how did you like Mark's show? Do you feel that this is an appropriate replacement for me? Uh, no, uh, I think it's fabulous, Howard. Do I like don't think he'd be a replacement for you because your hypocritical crowd does not go for what me and Mark believe in. The patriotic gayness in America is the way to go, Mark. Well, it's not a question of way to go. It's what I personally feel. Right, and this Mark, country Mark, comes before being gay. Mark, this country comes like first security for everybody. Mm -hmm. And your remarks are not welcomed on that note. Well, Mark, you seem to have uh, created controversy here today. People people are, uh, are, are calling in in droves. <laughs> they don't believe what's going on. They don't believe on. what they've heard. They no, don't Brett, believe it. Meet Howard Stern. All right, now, Brett, you are Mark's future son-in-law. Is that what's going on? You never know. Not legal yet. I don't want to know. She's uh -huh. only 17. All right, how old are you? 23. And are you having sex with Mark's daughter? Not yet, but I want to get to that Bel Air mansion quick. Can you right. believe this? <laughs> He's 23, yeah. she's 17. His father and I graduated high school. How does the protective father feel about that? Chaperone? Oh, Rebecca's a great girl. I mean, wait a second. What are you doing? You just just fixing your whatever. daughter up? What do you mean? 23 or No, it's I all a matter of that. coincidence. I'll explain. Basically, Mark came in. I went out with Rebecca Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. 
wanted to do something, and I found out she was 17. Kind of spoiled some plans. You know, number right. of these. Really Blink twice things. if you got the second base. <laughs> <laughs> that, he's trying to be funny. Don't worry. No. Forced comedy is not my issue. All right, so you have had you have had no sex <laughs> with Mark's daughter. No. Have you kissed her? No. Did you uh, digitize her? Oh my. Dan, Dan and Stone Stretch. No, it was very nice. Really? We, took, we went to see like, Mark, I'm shocked by this, this shock show you do. What shock? I'm getting digitized. Are you in shock? <laughs> That's right. Oh, good. Let me know well, when you feel stuck. My question is the, the predictive dad. Why are you fixing your daughter with a 23 year old? Rebecca, Mark's daughter. You're on the air. Rebecca, good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Well, I guess your dad didn't want to let you up here because he's so protective, but he lets you go out with a 23 year old. Uh, yeah. yeah see? Oh, I was very respectful. I'm sure you were. By the way, Mark, now that you've done it, uh, do you see that your daughter could have been here? Could have, yes. Maybe we'll make another date. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I, don't okay. think, I don't think that's happening. I, 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 I want to tell everybody that I lobbied to have him bring his daughter up here, and he refused. Well, let me tell you something. I feel Mark had a shot here that I, I gave, I've given no one else but Mark. He missed a big opportunity, in my opinion. Yes. I think the show would have been a lot stronger with your daughter, but that's up to you. You're the host of the show. That's what well, we were my, all waiting to hear. I understand, but I have to know that my daughter is uh, happy, comfortable, and safe. And what we heard coming in on the limo, she was not. Rebecca, is that true? Um, I didn't really want to go up there. The show is kind of wild at the beginning, so I just figured I'd do a call-in. Okay, fine. Fair enough. So, hey, Mark did what he had to do. I think the show would have been stronger. I think on, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give this show a 3. It was a little bit unfocused. Thank you. Uh, all right. Oh, no, let me just interrupt. Rebecca happens to be, she's one of the fun. I mean, she can definitely fill out a radio and help out. I feel I feel the show needs a lot of practice. Well, maybe you'll produce it. No, Does she have any, uh, I got my own problems. <laughs> 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 Sit here and produce the Mark Howard show. Okay. But Mark, you had your shot. Yes, and I appreciate it, Howard. You've always been good to me. I have Absolutely. Been. And, and I, I love I when you come in. That. And uh, Mark's daughter, you would have been safe here. I never would have done anything disrespectful. Yes, Mark is a poor judge of character. Yeah, I, 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 have I a... trusted that. And after when he he got back into the green room, I said, Mark, I think it's a mistake, and you ought to have your daughter here. Look, I've done millions of hours of television, and I've seen you, and I've been here before, and I really trusted that. I have daughters. Be safe. I certainly yes, would have understood. Because, and that's one one of the things that I said. You have three daughters of your own, and I don't believe that anything would have. Absolutely not. Okay. I and Mark should have known that. Ken, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, big time fan. Hey, now. Hey, I got a question for Mark. Yes. Yeah, hey, Mark, do your farts smell like Vaseline, and do you use lidocaine for anal sex to numb the pain? Why don't you just tell your father to bend over and enjoy yourself? Well, he did before, and I can't. I figure that's kidney. where it's coming from. Why don't Springer you... is not my name. I love your comebacks. Why don't you tell your father to bend over and enjoy right, yourself? Because he was very descriptive. <laughs> See, that's good banter. I like that with the callers. Very, very like descriptive. Yeah. The stuff with the callers is pretty good. Yeah, really? Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. It stinks to me. Rusty Pecker, you're on the air. Oh. Yes, I got a question for Mr. Harris. I'm the pepper for Modern Penis Magazine. I'd yeah. like to do a layout with you, well, Mr. Well, ask your mother and give her a dildo. All right, Mark. Well, congratulations Thank on your you. first show on WHMO. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Gilda, thank you. And, of course, Dennis, thank you. And, of course, your uh, daughter's boyfriend, thank you. Brett, right? That's right. All right. That's and uh, thank, and thank you to Rebecca. We'll be back right after these words. And if you want the Mark Harris Show, write to Sumner Redstone at Viacom. <laughs> <laughs> thank Howard for the opportunity, and it's the first time Howard Stern show has been entertaining again for a long time without the FCC and Bush bashing. So I think for that purpose, it went well. So what about all the callers? There was a lot of negative reaction. From It's hard to distinguish who was real and who was phony, because there were phony callers, as you know. So, you know, just go with the flow. That's it. That's it. Bye.